do love you enough for there to be a chibi. So my audio sure. Yeah, so my audio test worked okay. That's good things. So Yes, your audio your audio works just fine. You sound just a little bit distant, like you're in a Oh, like I'm in a tunnel or something? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, I can set that. Let me I gotta go into my settings for voice and video. Let's see, I can go up a little bit on the input volume. Can you hear me a little better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we'll try that. And then also I'm going to go here to the speaker settings. Let's go to the volume mixer, and I can take that up a little bit there and a little bit there. So hopefully that will work a little bit better. Wait. All right, when you look at the general uh, voice. Yes. And and you see, if you pull it up, it shows me, you, and then it says invite friends, correct? Yes, correct. On the top right-hand corner, there shows a little person with a plus sign, some yep. weird line, and, a, weird, and then, a wheel. So I can do that. Let's see, permissions. The weird, the, weird, the weird lines, do you have, is that crossed out, or is that actually colored? It's off, it says. Okay, good. Keep that off. Okay. So permissions. Actually, actually, you know what? Try it. Let's see how it works for you. When I tried it, it sucked for me, but try it for okay, you. Okay, so how does that sound? Talk again. Hello again. Yeah, turn that off. It sounds worse. Yeah, that's probably what will sound worse. So let's do the overview. I'll hop out of there. Um, let's call it General. I'm going to rename it. So this one here, I'm going to rename from General to game session there we go game session there we go so now that'll come up as game session everybody will love that that'll be good but those will give us the voice thing there but yeah, I just want to make sure I check everything out ahead of time. That way, when people get here, it's not a big issue. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just hop in so that way you can. Oh I can God, help yeah, you, you can. Volume. You can say hi to people and anything else if you want. I mean, you don't have to hop out right away. Wait a minute, what did you just do? Why? I just kind of set something down. Why? You got closer to the microphone, didn't you? Yes, I got closer to the microphone. I can move the you, microphone you closer to me if you move want. Move it closer because when you talked, it sounded perfectly clear without any. Distance. How about how about now? Closer. Okay. How about now? There you go. That sounds like. Okay. I've got I got my volume up on the microphone, so that will help with everything. That should get. Yeah, it, it sounds like you're let it. Before it sounded like you were standing feet feet away. <laughs> now you sound closer and clearer. I'm here, yay! It's always good. No, I, that's good. At least I got that up and running. Um, let's see, let's go through these because I got to see which ones I'll need tonight, which ones I won't. Calendar I'll need. That I won't. That I won't. That I won't. Those yes. Oh man, don't do that. It sounds horrible. Please, don't do that. God, somebody's going to be hurting their ears. So, yeah, you're funny, but somebody's ears will be popping and then we will we'll lose people from popping ears. Not a good thing. But I am the chibi. I know you're the chibi. Heaven help us, I know you're the chibi. Yes, I cause mass destruction wherever I <laughs> Why are you in my bed? Mass chaos and destruction. It's all good. Sassy's right. on, the on the bed, in the blanket. So. All right. Um, I'm here. Boy, that's good. Um, yeah, you sound, you sound. Come on. I, ca I can't even tell you. You sound better than voice. what you did when you first started. Uh, that's what I'm telling him. Come on into the voice channel. That way he, um. He is not out in the distance. So, all right, move those out of there. I don't need those. This I do need. Uh, I will when the song ends. <laughs> what song? I don't know. 
I quit asking at some points, you know, it's like, eh, all right. So, let's see, here's those, that's good. Um, I need that and that. Don't need those right there. There we go, I need those. Okay. Oh, that sounded bad. All right, there. Oh, maps, I always love maps. So, um, yeah, it's, it's game session, not general, but that's fine. I changed oh. it around, so don't confuse him. He'll be like, what general voice? And then we'll all be in chaos. So, yeah, let's move that off of there, too. That way I've got that down there. Well, I can, I can fix that. Well, that's fine. I mean, you know. Oh, good. I can use that one over this one. Use that one over this one. It's all fun trying to make it all work. Yeah, I don't need those. Good, I can get that out of there. So I don't need that right away. There. Oh, it's all fun and games. There we go. So I need those over there. It's all trying to have fun of where I do I set my stuff to best get to it so I don't pop things and hit the mic and everything. Mm. Well, I just thought I'd pop in. I'm going to pop out. All right. I'm playing on her iPad. She's ate her hot dogs. That sounds good. You can listen in whenever if you want. I might pop in time to time. We'll see. Can't hurt. Any, anything that keeps me from having um, moments. Yeah. That's I cool. Mean, like, like right now, I'm doing just fine. I'm not in any. Sure. But then it could know, change like, tomorrow. You never know. Uh, I know. I'm hoping it gets better as we go, since this is still new. Ah, it's all fun. Today. Welcome, Captain Bonnie from Scotland. Boy, you're coming from a ways. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, no, there's a thing here. In Input value, advantage, normal roll, advantage, or disadvantage, what does that mean? It just depends on whether your character has an advantage or disadvantage doing things. So on certain saving throws, you'll have advantage. Certain different things, depending on your class, you'll have advantage. Like uh, Shadow, our rogue, he has some advantages with some of his rogue things that he can do. And so you, you click that and it'll roll advantage automatically for you. So two dice will roll. If not, it just comes up with a normal dice roll and it'll ask you, do you want advantage or, or not? And you can choose. So do I, oh, uh, I think I pressed long on my basketball. That's all right. No problem. It it's, takes some getting used to. I mean, if you're not used to roll 20, it's not too bad. It just takes a little getting used to is all. I am used to roll 20. It's, um, it's 1E that, well, it's, it's uh, d and I'm not used to. Ah, okay. So is this your first time trying out 5E? Yes, well. Ah, I yeah. see. Nothing wrong with that. I'm a Pathfinder guy who, well, God, I started back in, in OD&D, back in the day when Gygax was still around. So that's when I started. I was a kid around those days. But Pathfinder has been my game for about the past eight years. One E has. And then I made my way over to five. I had some of the people I play Pathfinder with say, Rick, DM five. I'm like, okay. I'll DM some five stuff. Okay. It, it's actually easier. In some ways, you're going to love it because they've made skills easier. They have made the role play and the combat way easier. Um, so, an right, experience. So, and, and with combat and Pathfinder 2, you, mm -hmm. get three, you get three turns. Correct. Not so in here. Now, you do get an attack, a. a, um, a uh, move and then in some classes you get an extra response action so what do i get for a fighter um right to start out i think you just get uh an attack and you get a um 
move, but I think you do get a response action. Hang on here. They made fighters a lot more fun to play that way. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. See, go back to my handbook, and I can tell you. Because you said, all right, you said something was already a cleric. Yeah, yeah. Um, Silver, who is Yumi, she's out of Michigan with her husband Mike, who plays Veritas. She's doing a cleric of Selune, which is the goddess oh. of the moon, and so she has that uh, going with her on that. Let's see, your fighter, you get, yeah, at fourth level, next level, or no, fifth level, you get an extra attack. And then you get one at 11th, and then you get one at 20th. So eventually you'll have three attacks around. And if you just look at the fighter chart, this is off, if you got the player's handbook for um, 5e, it's on page 71. If you don't, I can take a quick picture of it for you. Uh... I'll, I'll do that when I level up. Okay, no problem. I can do that for you then, and, and that way you have that. Because, uh, again, that's that's the cool thing. that and, and, again, it's not that far off of 2E. 2E, they just gave you some extra actions to work with. And it looks mm. like Haven is here. Welcome, Haven. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's good to have you i'm talking uh with mr wolf here from uh scotland who you had come and join us and we're just talking a little bit about the fighter class awesome awesome yeah it takes a little the nice thing if you're coming from 2e5 is not a hard transition it's an easy transition it's actually easier than 2e is um it's really simple like yeah. 5e was basically stripped down from 4th edition, mm -hmm. and Wizards definitely um, just simplified the whole setup. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's, it's kind of vague. A lot of it is up for individual mm -hmm. interpretation, uh, GM interpretation. But yeah, 5e is completely simple. Yeah. If you can play Pathfinder, then you can definitely play like 5e. Oh, it's, yeah. Pretty intuitive. Pretty intuitive change between the two. Good good points. Um, now, some house rules. Every time any of the party rolls a natural 20, that gives you an automatic re-roll. It's a house rule that I have for Pathfinder 1E and 2E. And it's, it's my way of, as a GM for awarding some fun natural 20 rolls. Uh, you get to collect up to five a session. Now, beyond the session... You can collect up to 10 total as a, a, you know, over multiple sessions. Those are great. So anytime you, you, you fail a, a 20 roll where you don't have an advantage or a disadvantage, or, or if you do have a disadvantage, you can re-roll as if you didn't and, and replace that roll. You only get to do one an action, but you can burn it whenever you need it. It is, and, and it helps, believe me. At, you can ask uh, Keisha. Now, Keisha will be typing most times, so you have to get a little used to it. She's not big on hopping up onto the mic. But she, she'll she tell you, she uses that a lot, and she rolls a lot of natural 20s. And so in both campaigns, she plays in my Pathfinder and in this one. And so she takes that to advantage all the time especially when you, you have a critical fail. So say you roll one at, at the most inopportune moment. Well, that action just all of a sudden erases itself and the re-roll comes. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like that alternate reality. Um, God, what, what is it? If you guys have ever seen Black Clover, the, um, the anime Black Clover, Oh, yeah. I, is that the one with the vampires? No, that's the one where they have the magic guild, and, and the, the one guy who joins it who wants to be the king of the mages, or the wizards, he is magicless. He's the only guy in that whole world who's magicless. He joins this kind of weird, outcasty kind of guild, and one of the people in there is like a fey witch, and she has a little cat, and the cat protects them. It every time they go to have a horrible thing done to a guild member, the cat reverses time. You see it happen to them, then time reverses, 
And then it was as if it never happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I consider the re-rolls. It's, it's that way. So, ah, we got Mike and Yumi in room. Hey, Mike and Yumi. Hi, you're comparing re-rolls to... To uh, Black Clover? Cat. Yeah, Black and the cat. Clover, yeah. And the luck cat? Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, those are my birds for the new people. Ah. So we're all... cockatiel. So we're just waiting on T to join with Shadow Moon. He'll come up as Shadow Moon. He's our rogue. And then we're waiting on Willow, which is Miss Evie B. And she's over there not too far from you uh, in, in Scotland. She's up in the north part of the UK, going up she's towards down, you. She's down from me, actually. She's, uh, she's, she's uh, about, Liverpool. Yeah, about uh, just a slight ways down. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, for context, she is, like, with we're in Minnesota and Utah. Okay, so about that distance. That's not actually for well, you guys. No, not horrible distance. Not that, not that distance, no, because we're a lot smaller. But in terms of geometrical sure. places, yeah, she's she's you'll like Evie. She's a sweetheart. She's just one of these cool people I got to know over the years on Twitter. And we've always talked about running together. And in fact, most of these people, <laughs> Yumi, you, you're, I met you on Twitter, and then you introduced me to Mike. You're significant, and then Akisha, we met on Twitter. So this whole group is a Twitter group of people that came together. Mm-hmm. So kind of a fun, fun bunch. Uh oh, um, there's a Keisha. I, I see her. She's yeah. in the. Yep. Also, my internet connection is bad, so text chat is my only option. That's fine. If you want to, if you want to use it, if you're having problems with Roll Twenty, then just go to um, uh, Discord, and I'll trust your rolls. Whatever you roll on your your dice, just put it in there and let me know. Let's see. Hey, Miss EVB, there you are. Hi. See, Hello. just just speaking of you, we're getting a, everybody introduced around here so everybody gets used to each other. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, the people. <laughs> so um, I just want to yeah. <clears throat> say that my son had uh, a mouth, has a mouth infection. Oh, no. So um, I have to kind of help him make sure that he puts his heat on and off. I just have to remind no him. No problem. Just let you know. me know. Just type a little thing in saying, hey, I got to go do this real quick. No big okay. issue. I got you. I mean, if, if need be, I kind of got to feel how you would do things if you're away. So okay. I can I can kind of, or, or Mike can, whichever. I mean, whatever works easiest. I don't think it matters to either of us. So whatever you want to okay. do. Yeah, I can... You, Mike, you want me to give you control also under the uh, the character sheet so you have that? Uh, sure. Okay. Let me do that real quick. It's real easy to do on roll 20. All right. Go under here and just give you that ability. Let's see. Can we control by? There we go. And edited by. There we go. All right. So I got you on both. All righty. So we're waiting on T, and I will go ahead and get started because I know T. He runs late. <laughs> I've known him for years, so I can tell you he'll run a little late. Okay, so um, for the existing players, you guys remember you guys went out from Salt Marsh via the new boat you have, uh, or the ship, the cog. Uh, actually, more it's more of a brig than a cog. Um, it's It's... Looking at the notes they gave me, it's a pleasure yacht that was a brigadine that they converted into a smuggling ship. The Omnish did when they uh, decided to come up. So you took that here, had some fun with uh, Akisha and uh, her her character Freya, the snow elf, dancing on the deck. And then, um, oh, I will. I'll tell her definitely hi for you, Akisha, on that. No problem. She'll come in at some point. She's she's one of the co-people on here, so she can drop in and say hi to everybody. So you may hear Kim pop in. Um, 
so they did a little dancing on the deck, and Lyric the Tabaxi danced with you. And you guys almost ran into some things because Balam, who, though a sailor, he, he got distracted while singing and uh, almost ran you guys into the, the, um, the uh, reefs, but he kept you away just ever so slightly. And you laid anchor outside of the Mirror of Deadman. And the Mirror of Deadman is the swamp south of Salt Marsh where Sathis, the lizard folk representative, took you to his tribe. You got to meet Queen Othokent and her right-hand sub-chieftain. They put the party to a test to see if you are worthy allies or not against the Shahagin. And you at least passed from the hatchling's point of view. The hatchlings loved you, loved Willow, Loved Freya, loved Silver, had a lot of fun, and now you are honorary ambassadors from Salt Marsh. The two new ones joining, um, so that's that's Haven and uh, Wolf. Your characters arrived in Salt Marsh about similar time frame. Both were summoned off of some boards where you saw availability of jobs from Ada Oland, one of the head counselors of the town of Salt Marsh. Salt Marsh is a lot like where, Wolf, you're from. It's, it's a little smaller version. Yours is more of a city. This is more of a fishing town. Um, you have seen towns, uh, Yukiha, like this up in the north just with more ice around it. Uh, the, the air still has a bit of a nip to it, but it is uh, one of those things that has a lot less ice on the ocean side, on the Sea of Swords. And there's a little inlet bay that you both come into. One comes by boat and one comes by the road, uh, the trade road from the north. And you were able to talk to this older woman. She has, uh, she's human. She has iron gray hair. She's definitely older. You can tell she's been here for a while. And she welcomes you both and says, thank you so much for answering our summons. We had some other elves that had joined us as well and have been very helpful. Uh, they have been now a part of the the Adventurers Guild out of the Mariners um, group. And if you need, we would love to to have you join them. And and she she looks oddly at at Yukiha a little bit because of being a kobold, but not with any type of disdain in her look. It's just, you can tell the town is mostly, probably about 98% human. They're, at least everyone that you've seen. Now, you have seen a halfling, you did see a gnome coming in, a gnome female and a halfling male with an interesting hat with a feather on it that was headed out of town um, to the north, to a grove that was that way. But other than that, most of the fisher folk, most of the sailors here, down near the port, are human. She says, uh, you will be very well compensated for what you can help. And, and honestly, we don't have the, the resources here to handle it ourselves. We fear an attack by a group of lizard folk from the Mirror of Deadman though we have sent the rest of the adventurers ahead to discuss that with them. We can send you on a boat. It'll be a small boat, not anything near what they had. It would be a very small yacht that we can have take you down and, and then to the Mirror of Deadman near where their ship is. And then you can take a long boat to the shore if both of you are okay with that. Mm -hmm. and she looks at both of you just to make sure that it's okay with you both we have this plunder to be had Bonnie will be there 
she goes, you will find much around here. There is much to do. We're not like Waterdeep or Neverwinter, where there are plenty of adventurers. We are somewhat in between. Though we are well recognized and a great trade partner to Waterdeep. However, she says, we are more traditional, smaller, um, and, and we don't mind that. We, we like to be that place that people get away to enjoy a simpler life. She has one man with her, and, and he looks... Um, she, she, she introduces him as Eliander. And Eliander is an older gentleman. He dresses in a um, chain coat and looks like he is a martial prowess just from the scar on his face. Um, he has dark hair, but he is definitely older. And he's just watching the whole proceeding as, as she discusses with you and deferring to her. I love Freya. I'm beginning to think our sailing ship is a bit like the Millennium Falcon and the Sea of Swords. God. Yeah, I guess it could be that. Um, you never know. Uh, yeah, and the Queen Oath of Kent. And yes, the paychecks around here are quite nice. I, I always have to watch your comments, Akishi. You always throw in the one-liners here and there. Um, so, from there she says, you'll want to go down to the boat. You'll meet with Bartholomew. Bartholomew is one of our fishermen. He has a sailing yacht that also does some trade with Waterdeep. He and several of the guard from the city, the militia from the city, will take you down to make sure that you, you arrive safely at your destination. Now she says to you both, again, when you complete this with the other groups, she goes, I have promised them um, more gold in this. I will definitely give you what I am paying them each. And again, she, she says also, and this is up to you and how you meld with them, they have bought the old haunted house on the hill near here. It was being run by smugglers, and we did not know this to be the case. And your your fellow adventurers here found out that it was, and they wanted to purchase it from the town. So we gave them a very fair lease on it, and, and we asked for certain payments within certain times, and they've done really well at doing that. And, and so we're going to help them restore it, maybe as an operations for all of you, a place that you can go for respite. And again, she thanks you and says, we, we welcome both of you. And please, please, even if you get some looks, it's just because the good people here are just not used to, um, not, not used to seeing one of the draconic sort here. It doesn't mean that you are not welcome. Uh, we, we do see our fair share of traders here, and some are goblins, and, and some are orcs. Not all of, of the different folk who come here are stereotyped one way or the other. We try to keep an open mind of these things. That's good. So she goes, please, I mean, if there's anything you need, please let me know. Uh, come see us here at the council building. Uh, we, we are here up to the evenings. And uh, in the evenings, we go over to some of the local uh, taverns to have discussions and to have dinners. But we're more than welcome to even then talk with you about whatever is necessary and needed. And so from there, you can go down to the docks if you both want. Um, you just have to look for Bartholomew. And, and what looks to be, and again, Captain Bonnie, you, you, you're, you know your way around the ships. So when they say a yacht, you have in your mind what size of ship it will be. Just from working that type of, of work in the past. And then, uh, Nyukiha, if you've got any questions, just let me know. For Ada or for Eliander. Oh, 
All right. So you both head down. Uh, you both are able to go to the the yacht and find it. It, it looks to be a one master. It's fairly small. It, it would be considered the size of a yacht today in, in modern culture. It's just wooden. And Bartholomew is a large gentleman. He looks to be in his 30s, uh, quite stout. Um, and he's pulling some fishing lines in and, and putting them away for the evening. And he goes, oh, oh, you must be the, uh, the, the new adventurers that have come to join the other party. Indeed, I am Captain Bonnie from afar. Welcome. He goes, wait a minute. He says, are you from the, the, the Moonshase? He goes, do I detect a slight accent from the Moonshase? I've, I've been to the time to time. Ah, he goes, I've been there. He goes, beautiful area. Uh, great, great people, the folk are. He goes, I, I truly appreciate um, their zeal of life. Uh, oh, and, and a kobold. He goes, that, now that. Are you from our area? Are you from the Sword Coast? He asks. Do we have you, Haven? <laughs> You might be muted. Do we have... It looks like a way. But you are highlighted. That's weird. Okay, you are there. All right, no problem. <laughs> oh, okay, then just type it in. Do, do, like, um, do like Akisha does. Just type in your responses. Oh, he goes, Ten Towns area? Bryn Shandar, oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. He goes, I have had some people come down to our area from there. Very cold area, but very beautiful. Good hearty folk up there. Thank you. Also, can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. Yay. So, Yukiha... We'll just kind of um, smile at people and give a, a short bow and just say, please treat me kindly. They do. Surprisingly, you, you have seen the disdain from humans before. This, this gentleman doesn't show it. He seems like maybe he's a little more, I won't use the term metropolitan, but just broader thinking in his mindset. He has a very wide smile as he talks with you both. He goes, well, my crew and I are w ready to take you down if you don't need any supplies. If you do, he goes, I can point you to places where, where there's supplies if you need. I want nothing. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. He goes, how about yourself, Captain Bonnie? I need a new mug for my ale. Keep one. Ah, he goes, well, there's some good places I can I can send you for the ale. He goes, in fact, there is a wonderful place in town. Uh, that... I don't need the ale itself, just a mug. Oh. A mug. He goes, well, you would want to go to Winston's store. He goes, you got to watch Winston a little bit. He's a little bit of a shyster. Yes, he is. And um, he's out as you go towards our, what would be our, our um, cemetery. And he says, you're going to go out past, uh, you're going to take the road that heads past the docks up the hill to the east. And he goes, you go out that way and you will see a two-story that is Winston's store just before you get to the temple of Ishtia, which is the goddess of the sea. And uh, that is where he is located a little bit on the outskirts of town. He likes the quietness out there. Thanks very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And you can see the town is, is very bustling. It's, it's about midday, and there's just a lot of people that are milling about the town and talking. Some people are going to the bakery. Some are going to some different areas. The smells 
and the 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 brine air, the smells of just really yummy meals. Anything from meats to vegetables, cooked vegetables. You can smell both smells drifting through the town as you go by. And you make your way up the hill and the hill just out, looks down on some other areas that is the shoreline. And as you go up it, you pass a farm, a really well-to-do farm, uh, where there are several workers out in the field working hard uh, to produce the different crops. And you think you see maybe they're doing some of the local drink, the kava or the coffee. Uh, you know, and it's spelled with a K versus the, the C, the traditional C we're used to. It's K-A-F-E, coffee. And they're growing those plants as well as wheat and barley. And you are able to see just past that on the hill uh, what looks to be a shop. It, it is a very older type of almost gothic structure of a, of a, a shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, C is the exactly. They they use the K here a lot more, and and you see it even with some of the people here. You don't just see what are the Aluskans, which are the northern types. You see a mix of all different sorts of people. You think you may see some people from Kalimshan here. You do see the more um, cinnamon skin of of that area as well as some dark, darker skins, which you are thinking are from down from Zakhara, which is the continent well south. It would be their version of equatorial Africa. You, you see some there as well. And, and in fact, as you're going up to the store, you see a gentleman that is walking back into the temple. He has a, a red bandana around his head and a cutlass at his side, and he is a very dark chocolate skin. And he is humming a shanty to himself as he's going in. And you're guessing that this is probably the temple to Ishtia, and maybe even Valkar, the, the two, the god and goddess of the seas. Okay. Is armor class the same as AC? Yes, uh huh, it is. That's fine, so I'll put in my name. I'm going to AC 16. That's perfect. Actually, that's actually for yourself. So. Oh, perfect. I love that. That's that. Now that's helpful. I like that. That's really good. Then I don't have to ask you. I can just take a look and see. Um, Inside this shop, again, it's it's rustic. It has a lot of different things in it. Um, odds and ends, fishing line, um, various lures, various um, hemp products, as well as you see a little case that has more exotic items like rings and necklaces. There is a little bit of a darker skinned halfling here. And he looks over and goes... Oh, oh, welcome. Welcome. He goes, guests, I always love new guests. From the area or from out of the area? I'm from out of the area. I'm just here for a job. I'm also looking for a mug. Oh, would you like an earthenware mug or a wooden or a pewter? He goes, what? I, basically, basically, I want something that will last. My last one broke. Oh, he goes, I've got a really good one. He, he goes over to one of the shelves, and you can see all these different beer mugs and steins up there. He brings down what looks to be a, um, a brass-looking one. But you know it's not full brass by the coloration, maybe some mixture. And he brings it down, and it has the face of a dwarf on it. And he goes, now this, this comes from the upper towns, the dwarven towns. Once in a while I get a, a merchant who comes through here and brings me these things from Neverwinter. This, now this will last you well. And he goes, and the salt air will not make it corrode in any way. 
a quick question. Are dwarves known for their good craftsmanship of mugs? Yes. Like they are, like they are in our game. Any type of metalworking, they're well known. And, in fact, it's prized. Um, he goes, I'll make you a deal. He goes, since you are new here, he goes, normally I would sell this at five silver. I will sell it to you for two. Hmm. Which one's my silver? SP. SP will be your silver. Now, if you need to break them, it is... 10 each. 20, well, yes, 10, 10 silver to an electrum, and then 10 electrum to a gold. Right, where... Uh, sorry, the whole thing's new to me. Uh, That's all right, you guys. And, and if I didn't write it on there, because I may not have written in... Um, you and Yukiha each have about 125 gold in in coinage on you. It'll be on the second page that you want to put it. Um, so if you open and up your character sheet on roll 20 and you go to, whoops, let's see. I'll open Willow's and take a look at hers. If you go to under bio, you'll have core, you'll see across under your name and, and things you'll see Advantage, normal, disadvantage, maybe. Core and then bio. And then under bio, you, you if you scroll down, you'll see treasure. And you can put it in there. Or you can put it... Let's see, does the first page have it? I don't think it does. It does. It's, it's, um, it's at the bottom of the, the core page. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Right where your equipment is. Yep. CP, yeah. PP, EP, GP, and PP for plat. And you can Why just input that? input the numbers in, in it. Yep. It's, yeah, you it's, know. Just so hard. it's just so hard to read. I know. I'm going to break it down for myself. I'm going to put nine gold with me. Okay. And nine silver for... Nine of them for any of these. All right. Does that look great? Yeah. No, and and that looks that looks good. All right. Um, so he goes. So do we have a deal? I'll take it. Ah. Take he says, "Wonderful, wonderful. I love that you like the workmanship." He goes, "If you need anything else, let me know." He goes, "I have contacts that I can get other things if you need." So um, just just to make sure for me, I'm changing one to seven. Is that the set SP? Yes, SP. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Is and, it the DC and then now really hard to see on this one. Yes. Uh huh. Let me see. Down there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. The right, the, okay. the seven is uh, the triangle is the silver pieces. The kind of oblong one is the electrum. And then the the what looks to be almost like a uh, cylindrical one is the gold, and then the ones that look like a diamond are the platinum, and then of course the copper being at the top. So it goes copper, silver, electrum, gold, and platinum. Right. So he goes. Anything else I can help you with, um, or interest hmm. you in? I'll put my. Um, I don't let me put my where's my tre additional treasures. Um, one or mug. Okay. Um, I'll need some boot polish. Oh, of course he goes. He reaches under the counter and brings it up, and and he has some. It's really nice. It's a little tin that'll have that, and as well as a cloth. And he goes, if you okay. use that, he goes, you can polish it right up. He goes, you just want to use it on the outside and not around the lip of it, he goes, because, again, you'll drink from it. But the lower area is below that and, and the handle. And he goes, if you do this, mm, I'd say once a month, it should stay quite well. Okay. Good. Now, Yukiha, if you want, you can do a perception check to see just more about this this halfling. You get a feel off of him. Right, so how much for the boot polish? He goes, well, let's see. 
He goes, I'll, I'll part with it for five coppers. I think that's a fair trade. It's good polish. And it will keep your keep them from cracking and wearing, definitely. So with a, right. a 10, you kind of... You get the feeling there's something off about him. He's way too friendly. Just a little bit too friendly. That was a mistake, by the way. I didn't mean to roll it twice. It was oh, no problem. No, no. That, that gets you used to clicking on it and doing it. That's fine. No problem. Because you can either do it the D20 way if you just want to go and click on the dice, or if you click on the actual stat itself or skill, it'll roll it for you. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to kind of just take a step back since hopefully he's seeming a bit too nice. I'm going to say thank you so much, but I have everything I need, so I must politely decline. I understand. He goes, if that changes, please let me know. He goes, I, I tried to do well. He goes, I know there's other places you could shop here. And... Well, he goes, one I would recommend um, if you're looking for unique oddities. Um, Zendros at the Faithful Quartermasters down near the docks. She comes upon some very unique things. But again, just let her know I sent you and... Uh, she should be able to help you. If not, there's also the, the green market that is down in in the center of town where they have, oh, different livestock, um, you know, uh, grown fruits and vegetables. But they also have some items down there as well. Thank you. Well, I welcome <laughs> the temple for a good trip. Oh, much, much thanks to you and I, and I wish you well and, and please if you find anything unique and want to bring it I, I will offer you a very fair price for it understood thank you very much so I'm going to go ahead to the temple of what was, her, what was her name ah Ishtia the goddess of uh, of the waves you, you know that one well but it, there also seems to be a symbol up there that you think might be the god of the waves Valkur as well so you think that maybe it, it serves a dual purpose. Mm. Well, better peace in both. All right. So you, you head into there, and as you do, you see a gentleman that is about six foot. He w has basically uh, sailing... At what looks to be a traditional sailor's outfit, um, except for the red headband, which kind of leads you... Do a knowledge history for me. Oh, uh, okay. Even if you don't have it as a, a prime, you know, marked thing, you can do it uh, as untrained. Oh, natural 20. Now you get to mark down, Yukiha. You get to mark down a reroll. <laughs> Every natural 20 gives you a reroll on a 20. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he screams, Privateer. Uh, you've seen a few of them up there in Bran Bryn Shander who have come in from the shores. And this, this gentleman is a definite that. Captain Bonnie, you just, you think Sailor, something unique, but... But Yukiha laid that one out there, and, and Yukiha knows. They know that uh, he, that uh, he is a privateer. But... Would you be with me, sir? I choose to say nothing. <laughs> okay. And he opens his arms. He goes, welcome. May Ishtia bless you. He says, what brings you to our fine town and to my temple? I've come to tell Ishtia Gears a safe passage on the ship. Oh, he goes, that is a good thing. The goddess will absolutely look to your needs. And and he, he does a normal what is to be a blessing over each of you. And he goes, much. so what brings you here? He goes, are you a brother of the waves? I hope to be. 
Ah, that is wonderful. He goes, I have sailed many a year. Now, you both can tell, for a human, he is in his 40s, maybe 50s, going into 50s, because he has a little bit of a graying or salt and peppering to his beard. He goes, oh, he goes, I have sailed so many, so many wonderful ports, and may you also do the same. He goes, I'm curious, are you friends with the elves that have come here to help us? Well, I am completely new to the area, being from the far north, but I have heard that I might be working with a group of elves, so that is ah. potential. He goes, that is wonderful. Miss Willow is such such a sweet soul. You will like her, I think. She she is one with nature and all that is about the nature. And, and oh, God. He, then you have to deal with the scoundrel Balaam. Balaam always comes and worships here. He helps them. Balaam is one of those, uh, I don't know what to say, charming sailing types. He, he puts to shame the normal sailors. Uh, but don't let his horns push you away. Or the color of his skin, which is of the sea, by the way. He is a he is a faithful companion at the end of the day. But yes, he goes, I hope that you run into them. They are a good sort. In fact, they have just recently stopped a group of smugglers here in town. Ah, such a good thing, and the goddess was so pleased that he that she blessed their ship before they sailed. They were headed down towards the mere, I think, from what Willow told me. So be tra be careful going down there. The mirror has its good people. But the bullywugs and some of the other creatures out there, not so hospitable. Thank you very much for the information. You're welcome. He says, please come and worship at any time. The goddess would love to have you both back. And, and there may be some things you can help me with, with the party once you get with them. He goes, I have mentioned to them there are some wrecks of ships that I would like to get uh, more information and some items off of. Very exotic. He goes, in fact, one was from Cartour. That's the one that I have, the mo or Cartour. That's the one I have the most uh, interest in. That is interesting because my family comes from Cartour. Uh, many years ago, they came over the, the northern sea. And they settled in the far north. Oh. Something in which I would be interested. Well, then you may have interest too. The captain, um, Shen Shi, who sailed her, went down in a storm. I knew him once. A, a good, good sort. But Shen Shi just didn't always have the luck with the waves. Sadly, he and his junk went to the bottom. Not far off our shores. Hmm. I hope he found rest. Sometimes they they become restless, they do, and need to be put put to rest again. Well, if if you do have a chance, I would love, love to pay you for your services. As would the goddess. And Thank the you. god Valcor as well. He goes, I, I, I worship both. They both embrace the sea. Well, thank you kindly. I humbly accept. Well, may your travels be, be calm and, and the oceans and winds be in your favor, he says, with a slight nod and a smile and a twinkle of his eyes. So, I will do the same smile back. You get a good feeling going out of there. You feel like he is someone that may be of help somewhere down the line. And, and knowing a priest in town doesn't hurt, especially one that is of the waters. All right, so you both want to head back down to Bartholomew and, and head out? That sounds like a plan. All right. Well, you both head on to the yacht, and Bartholomew and his crew of, of six get the ship ready to go. 
again a small one master and and the the um, actual weather today is a bit cloudy and a bit of a nip in the air um, you can see that there was some snow on the ground which you find very refreshing down here yukiha since you're from the north and you're not unused to the the snows um, you also captain bonnie have seen the snows out where you are not as much but in this climate that you're in right now, it is the north, and even down this far, it does snow. The winds pick up. The winds are about hmm, 12 knots, maybe, to the south, and are blowing somewhat southeast in towards the inland shore. Uh, Bartholomew points out several things as you're sailing along. You, you see what looks to be what you think is a narwhal um, that jumps out of the water and goes back in with its horn. And, uh, and also some dolphins that are swimming out just uh, maybe about a half a mile out from the boat. Again, wind's favorable right now. And, and the snow lightly comes down a little bit as you're sailing. And after about two, two and a half hours, you come upon what looks to be a pretty sizable ship. Um, definitely the size of, of what would be considered a brigadine, which is a two-master. And you can see up in the crow's nest what looks to be a very ebony-skinned uh, individual with white hair. And he is staring at both of you. Now, do a knowledge history for me, both of you, on that. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> and, and yes, T, <laughs> I see you there. You quietly snuck in. <laughs> oh, no, on that one, you couldn't tell. Captain Bonnie, you think maybe an elf and then it just dawns on you ebony skinned elf and the word drow forms in your mind now the rest of the crew that you can that all of you can see running around and looking towards you they wave towards bartholomew and he waves back at them uh but the other takes you back a little bit. You do see a darker skinned elf that is standing up on the um, the the stern, up where the uh, the uh, wheel of the ship is. He is a mocha skinned elf, looks like a wood elf, and quite majestic looking. And, and he looks quizzically at you both and follows the boat until you are deposited uh, by longboat over to it. And you are both welcomed up. Shadow, you, you see what looks to be a... Um, not qu would, you, would you say white skin, Yukiha? More of a, like a... A, um, a very fair gray, but almost, almost white. Almost like white. The color of snow that is like stayed on the ground for a few weeks okay that's great description you see that as well as what looks to be a sailor type uh, that has come aboard uh, so can I can I tell the race you know that the gray skin is a kobold without a doubt hmm. the other is what type of human would you say you are, Captain Bonnie? Are you folk? Um, are you Illuscan? Um, I'm not human. I'm a sea elf. Oh, God, that's right. My bad. Oh, God, I've totally blown that. You see what looks to be a, a lighter blue-skinned elf. And you immediately cl click into aquatic elf. It, it you have seen aquatic elves before in your travels, right? Yeah, I believe I also speak aquatic. You do. 
Oh, absolutely you do. You, you speak um, what would be called Aquan. That's the land or the native language of the sea or all the sea type of folk. Yeah. I think we're all one type of elf each, aren't we? Yeah. With the exception of Yukiha, you are all elves. And, and some of the NPCs. They, they have arrived just about an hour and a half after your party set to the shore at the mirror. And, and went in with Sathis to talk with Queen Otho Kent. Now, this is our first time seeing them, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and, and Bartholomew hails up from the boat and says, Hail, folks. These are some new adventurers to join you, sent by Ada. Wanted to make sure you knew where they were from and that they will be helping out. So, Yukiha just, just kind of like bows and says in Elvish, please tweet me kindly. It is a pleasure to meet you. Oh, everyone. How are y'all doing? <laughs> well met. All right. Mm-hmm. Quaid, and just nods and says, welcome. And he goes... They are your charge, Shadow. I'll watch the ship if you want to take them out to the rest of the party. Okay. You just put that on me, huh? Just like mm-hmm. you did in the, in the town. <laughs> he does. He chuckles a little. He goes, mm, yeah, somebody's got to watch the ship. He says with a little twinkle in his eye, you don't think he's being condescending in any way, but it's a slight <laughs> little jab at you from right. him. <laughs> it's his little jab at you on things. So I'm trying to play him as, play him as best as Pep would do him, but yeah, yeah. He, he would probably say some other things, but you know, right. I'll be... <laughs> All righty. Um, so I'll let you guys kind of figure that out. Now, um, Freya and Silver and Veritas and Willow, it is um, the, the... You had a lot today. So, sorry about that. The door's open a little bit. <laughs> That's Kim talking with Munchkin. <laughs> you will get some background noise once in a while from us. Um so, uh, all of you have just finished up with Otho Kent and the little ones, and you, you are feeling a lot better than where you were. She has just assigned Sathis and two of her um, royal retinue to go with the party as um, emissaries to Saltmarsh. Now, there is some whispering in her ears by Sariv, her counselor. And he's not a shaman, but he's more of a counselor to her. And she nods her head and turns towards you and goes, We may have some other things for you. There is... An issue that my warriors are having problems with, my shieldmen. There is a, hmm, I think you would say an alligator in your language. Yes, in the common. Crikey. It is troubling our village. It is a old, old creature, very big almost albino in look it is a hindrance to us we we wish to see it removed it would be a great um a great boon for us if you were to able to do that 
could you type the names? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the two will be accompanying us back to. Yeah. I just. Uh, that's according to my notes. All right. So. That Sathras? Sathis Sathras. is the one, which is the one you know, and he is the um, warrior. And then there I is... I thought it was Grath and Vasith. Yep, it's Grath and Vasith. You remembered quite well. Yep, those are the ones. No problem. That's It's easy to do with all we go through so quickly. She says, you you can use other members of your group or crew if you need for this. But this would be a great help. Some of our allies do not like the fact that we are making friends with humans and a sea elf. She points to Oceanus and says... That does not go over as well, but the Kaolinth and the the Lokatha, the fish folk, and the uh, hmm, what is their name? Yes, uh, the the Mare folk may not see eye to eye with our alliance with you. Say again. Now, am I one of the ones she's talking to? No, no. You guys haven't arrived yet. You guys could be making your way over if that's what you guys want to do. This is going on over at the village while you guys right now are getting ready to to head over to the party. Uh, okay. Well, before I begin, mm -hmm. what season... What season am I? Because ah. I'm not entirely sure what I left. I left off as summer, but during our afternoon, you were summer, was autumn. Right. Yes, yes, so, yes. You... What am I currently? Ooh, okay. With the talk about an alligator, you turn winter. So you are your now winter colors. You're more serious Ooh. colors. Because this is a serious thing being asked. Yeah. yeah. So you got the party sees her shift. Let's see, your autumn colors is what? It's a, a orange. It's a orange, yeah. And then the winter colors are more of what a blue color, more of uh, a yeah. Frosty so she, blue. she shifts. Her skin goes from orange to blue very subtly. Again, it, it almost freaks you out at times. Way <laughs> Willow. Mm. Yeah, it is. And, and and something that, Freya, you don't find too alert, alarming. Being that you're a snow elf, Frosty is okay. You're okay with that attitude a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Lyric just kind of beside you, um, Willow. You can hear her just kind of, it's, it's almost her purr chuckle, as you would call it. Being a tabaxi. Um, yeah. So Willow, um, Willow says, uh, as much as, as much as I would like to help you, this is obviously a terrible idea. We're we're gonna go and we're gonna die and we're gonna die horribly and 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 I don't think I don't think we should I don't think we should be doing this. <laughs> Uh, we're, 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 we're experiencing Willow the Basket case. It's all good. <laughs> She's like starting to hyperventilate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of pat her on the back. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've had those better days with her. I mean, you know, it's... it's <laughs> how, how can you work with it? It, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, let's so, see. So, um, how big is this alligator? Um, know? the alligator is quite a big size from what she's describing. You're, you're thinking in your mind, nine, maybe ten foot long. Okay. It's, it's quite, it, it's eaten one or two of, of the normal commoner lizard folk that were out fishing. 
Um, about this time, so Shadow, you should be able to see this here. Um, you and Yukiha and um, I've got uh, our captain there all together. Let's see. Is that? That should be. Yep, that's Yukiha. I think there is it. Yeah. Um, if you go to the map, you guys will see you're at an entrance with a door. It, it's at the top center of the map. This is the warrens of the, the lizard folk. It, when you arrive, a couple of the warriors nod and, and grunt, and one says, follow. And he takes you inside and, and around where this is. This is a packed earth and rock kind of structure that you're going through. And you see quite a few lizard folk as you're being walked through the different rooms by the warrior. As I'm moving y'all down towards the throne room where they are currently. Alright, I'll just do this. And we'll kind of copy and then I'll move you guys where you need to be. Alright, so and then where's my paste? Bear with me as I get everybody in there. Um, yep. Alright, so we'll just do this and we'll move everybody down. And that lizard folk commoner will be the one that's leading you in. And you guys come up to the, these double doors. They are um, very thick wood double doors with some ornate carvings on them of lizard folk. And you see that they open as, as Iritos and one of the others leave the area. They are um, the uh, sub-chief and one of the guards. And they nod to the lizard man and go down the hallway as you are brought into the chamber. Now, in the chamber, you can see the party is there. There on, uh, on either side, there are some uh, different warriors. And there is Queen Othokent... You can tell her she has a a dark green as well as a little bit of black tint to her. She wears a crown of sorts and she sits on a very nicely carved throne. And the guard says, my queen, in broken common, there are more of party for you. She goes, huh. Welcome, she says. Join your friends. Um, you have my welcome here. And and this room is is a very nicely done. There are, there are th three pillars to either side. Again, not something. The way you look at this this room, it is not what you would expect of lizard folk. They're more, not primitive, but just more earthy, less like this. This was well thought out and, and almost engineered, in a sense, by their people. Screaming that this is not a stupid tribe of lizard folk. These are very intelligent lizard folk. Uh, you guys, the party that's in there, see a sea elf that looks to be dressed in um, sailorish attire. You see a gray-white kobold that stands about a foot nine inch and shadow. Actually, I have it, I have it in my appearance. I got a long blue hair with white tips, leather armor, fingers gloves, and a large white brim top. There you go. Leather. You almost now now Captain Bonnie, you see what looks to be up front with all these other elves and a gnome and a tabaxi, a white with black spotted tabaxi woman. A tiefling. He has blue horns and blue skin, almost sea blue. He wears a brown tricorn hat with a feather in it. And he has what looks to be ship weathered leathers on him as well as boots and a cutlass that he carries on his hip 
and he kind of sizes you up a little bit. And then there's a smile with the what looks to be pointed teeth that a tiefling normally would have. You think his blood is definitely not devil blood. Maybe demon, maybe oni of some sort. Mm-hmm. But you definitely, he doesn't scream the normal red colors of the infernal tieflings. You do see a snow elf, which, Yukiha, you can almost identify immediately a snow elf. You have seen many snow elves in your time. Uh, she stands in the middle of the back of the group, um, along with a moon elf, what looks to be maybe a, a cleric of sorts, and then a very blue skinned. <laughs> looking winterish looking elf but not elf you you, there's something not quite total elvish about her more sylvan than elf so fey comes to mind when you when you look at her and then there is an elf towards the front that has dark black hair and does not dress in armor, but has a very martial bearing to him. And then a purple-haired gnome that stands next to the snow elf. He stands probably about three foot one inch. Um, wears very nice looking outfit. You, you would almost take him for a merchant more than you would an adventurer. And then, of course, the tabaxi, which intrigues you because tabaxi are not as common up north. Not that you haven't seen a cat folk, but they're just not as common. Now, for for you, Captain Bonnie, you have seen a few tabaxi in your time as sailors. Uh, She has a alluring feel to her. Um, make a perception check, each of you. And this is a sense of smell. Um, oh yeah, the aquamarine floor-length dress. Yes, yes. The, the, the snow elf has a very regal bearing to her. Not a commoner's bearing, but almost a... Probably a, an upper-class bearing. But yeah, make a make a smell sense check. The rest of the party's kind of used to it, and you are shadow very used to the how lyric smells. But the rest it may throw for a, a, a loop. Uh. You what now if you go into your character sheet and you see the skill, you just have to double or just click on it. And it will come up to roll it with advantage or with... There you go. Yeah, you can how you smell almost a... It smells almost like fresh green leaves or underbrush. Captain Bonnie, you you get a, a clear whiff. And she smells like a summer day out in the forest. That smell is coming very strongly off of her. Which... Yeah. Who again? It's, it's a smell of leaves. Almost like leaves or underbrush if you were out in a summer day where things have melted and it's more the summer greenery. That's the smell that she puts off. And it's quite strong for anybody in about a 10-foot area. Which you are. Mm-hmm. I, you can do a knowledge nature. And what is this summer? <laughs> <laughs> well, she turned. I, you say that out loud, I take it. I don't say it out loud because it might be rude, but I just kind of think it to myself. So the knowledge, uh, is- knowledge nature brings you to the Fae. 
It really does. She smells like what you would expect a fake creature to smell like, which is odd with the tabaxi. Why would a cat <laughs> smell like the fae? <laughs> then I'm going to specifically just step back and say, uh, I apologize for my rudeness, but would you, could you possibly be a fae creature of some sort? Once again, excuse me for my rudeness. So Queen Otho Kent looks amused, the, the lizard folk queen, as she looks over towards Lyric in this conversation. Lyric turns and goes, ah, little one, you are perceptive. Yes, it is fey. Yes, quite perceptive. That is most interesting, but also beautiful. Well, thank you. Such manners. It is refreshing, she says. With a with a toothy cat smile, if a cat can smile, and yeah, it's it also keeps the others from. <laughs> Never mind, we're doomed. <laughs> I love Shadow. Oh, T, you always throw in some fun comments. Um, you, you see that lyric just from everything you see, she doesn't seem to be offended at all. If, if anything, she is intrigued that you have perceived this about her. Hmm. That is good news, then. She, she looks at, at Yuki and says, We must talk later, yes? When, when we have time. This would be interesting. I don't see many of your sort, but I am intrigued, she says. I am in bold specifically when adapted to the cold weather the oh, snow ah a winter folk essentially <laughs> so queen queen otho kent says you're most welcome little one she goes i find your kind most most pleasing we get along with with your folk at least here in the mirror, we do. Thank you very much. And, and you almost feel a sense of acceptance because these are these are lizard folk, and lizard folk and kobold, though they are different, one is draconic, one's not. It's the fact that both come from a similar origin that it makes you feel comfortable more so than maybe being around the humans and the elves. Um, Indeed. <laughs> Probably matching boots. <laughs> yeah, what about the allies? Deepening the bond of friendship. Um, okay, so you ask, what is in that for... She goes, well, I think it would help with the other allies. They would see that you are not trying to abuse the alliance. We may not get along with all of our allies. The Kaolinth are mistrusting anyways. They will never trust uh, the two sea elves. Which you see, um, Captain Bonnie, there is a sea elf with them as well. Uh, let's see, did I put him in here? Uh, yes, I believe it's this one um, by Willow. That's the other sea elf. He is um, kind of an aqua skinned, and he looks like more like your folk do when they're coming from the ocean itself he gives you a perceptive nod and a smile almost a knowing acceptance i do i return it the queen looks at both and goes i don't mean to insult either of you but it's just the kale length do not like. And, and you know that for a fact, Captain Bonnie. The, the kale length are like a sea version of almost a troll. And they do not like sea elves. Just like the Shahagin don't also like sea elves. There's a, there's a hatred between them. Now, again, that's as a whole. There are exceptions to the rule. But there there is a almost a cannibalistic feeling from Sahagin 
that they would definitely eat a sea folk uh, of, of, of another kind. So, uh, maybe free laundry service. God, you guys are killing me. <laughs> I got to keep these little little eye, eye looks in the, the column of the typing over there. <sighs> so she, she looks at all of you and says, Hmm, yes, they are. They are, Mr. Self. They are a, a, a horrible plague. They have taken our home, and we are not pleased with this. If the Alliance can help us there, then we will be an ally going forward and a trade partner with the people of Salt Marsh. And yes, it would earn you... Well, she goes, you would get your choice of whatever the Sahagin have, if you dispose of them. my people would take then what is left after. It would be our payment. Well, of course. She goes, you are doing our folk a favor in helping with this alliance. All right. So now it's up to the... So you can all kind of get used to each other a little bit. These two are the two that will be going with you guys eventually. They move over to here for now. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, uh, Willow heads over to the, the new friend, and she looks kind of gloomy. She looks kind of sad. And she says, hello there. No, I would usually be so, so excited to have some new friends, but... Unfortunately, you have found us on a doomful day, and we are very unlikely to survive. <laughs> so, I'm like, the worst is going to happen. <laughs> Balam goes, Oh, Willow, don't worry. It will be all right. All things will be all right. The, the. As long as I am here. I will do my utmost to keep you safe and to keep your body safe. There you go. Blom looks at everybody and Nicodemus goes, well, well, I think we would, with with the new friends, yes, I, I think we would be of a marked advantage as long as we didn't approach it crazily. I, I think we could win. Yes, yes, I do. This world is a dangerous place. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Hmm. Before we say yes, mm -hmm. I have something to show all of you. Hmm. All right. Do you want to show them here, or do you want to take them outside and show them? That's up to you. I would like to show them outside. All right. So if the party wants, we can move everybody. I, I can mass move everybody outside if that's easy. That way then... My map hasn't uploaded either. Uh oh Well, let me do this again. Hang on here. I will move it over one. So I'll move over to the ship. See if that comes up for everybody. Does the ship come up okay? Oh. nothing but a black screen. Yeah, I don't see mm. it. Same here. Alright. So I will do this real quick. Let me refresh it. Let's see what happens when I refresh and bring everything back up. I'm just going to move from there to roll 20 salt marsh. And we'll see what comes out. That's not good. Can't have you guys not seen the map. All right, let's see, go here, roll20.net. Sometimes, unfortunately, roll20 gets used by a lot of people. And sometimes the servers don't always do what I need them to do. All right, 
so it's loading. Um, you can say what you want to show them if you like. So I stumbled across some maps that were hidden on this ship. Mm. What's on the maps? I have no idea. I didn't even open them. I said I'm going to wait until I'm with my team. Well, I think we should open them now. We're all by ourselves. All right. So, um, what you see from what he has brought you are that these maps look to be nautical maps. In fact, they're maps of the Sword Coast. And it looks to be possible shipping routes on them. It kind of highlights the shipping routes and all the things involved with them. Hang on here, I'm gonna move some of these down so you guys are a little closer. There we go. Can everybody see now? Yes. Okay, good. Uh -huh. So everybody's outside. And, and this is an earthen area that smells of swamp and different sorts of smells. Um, you guys are definitely in the middle of the swamp, but near the seashore. So it's a mix of brine as well as swamp smell. Uh, but yeah, the, at least there's at least three maps that have two of which are of the Sword Coast. One goes up towards the Ten Towns and, and the Ice Harbors up that way. One shows out towards the Moonshay Islands and then one shows the islands that are off of Kalimshan uh, to the south. So basically these are the shipping routes for all the major powers and shipping things of where is recommended <coughs> to sail. But it is definitely nautical maps. You could easily get some value out of these if you if you guys ever wanted to sell them or if you could just keep them for your your group to know what are the safer lanes. <coughs> Good point. You will need some weapons to deal with the alligator. Um Depending on what you have. Maps for... Yeah, exactly. That is... A, well well put, Akisha. That is exactly what they are. <laughs> the five-finger discount maps of how to, how to get goods and services. Um, yeah, you, you guys could try moving it. Um, but again, as you know, it would take a lot to do it. You would, you would have to find a way to close its mouth and then make sure you don't get bit. Okay. Um, well, I, like, I know how like most uh, muscles for opening their jaws are really weak. That's what I was Exactly. Yep. <laughs> They they definitely would be, and and it wouldn't be the easiest for them to do as a whole. But again, they are kind of what they are. Now I'm going to open up an area. Let's see, in the middle or towards the lower part of the map, where if you guys go ahead and accept that it, it'll be where everybody starts from. So let me do this, reveal area, and I'll put it here. That will be the area that everybody will start in. Um, I get a small question. Sure, ask away. Uh, I cannot move my token, so is there some way of... Ah, yep, there is. Let me go here. Um, let's see, let's go under your okay. character sheet. I will do that. And, and everybody make sure you can do that. If you can't, then I will go ahead and uh, I just have to highlight the token. Hang on here. So I can't move mine either. All right. Um, I just need to do that. Hang on here. Let me click to select. I'll select that. Go to Yukiha. And I want to click on that. Save changes. Now. I will also make sure this way with the cog wheel that you have it. Um, all right, and then controlled by. I'm also seeing multiple of the same token in different areas when I zoom out. 
All right, let's see. Let's go to you as well. I can get you there. All right, and that will be um, Captain Bonnie and control by. And you've got it as. Let's see. There we go. All right. So that should be there. Everybody else, can you guys control your... All right, go ahead, Haven. See if you can do Yukiha. See if they will move for you. Let me see. I don't think so. I can click on them, but I can't actually move them. Ah, okay. Like, I see them up there. Wonder why. wonder why you can't. Let me see. Let me go back here to select again. Um, now you do have, you can see your character sheet okay, right? Because I do have it controlled by Yukiha Haven. So you sh should be able to do that. If not, see, that's weird. Also, if you zoom out, there's also multiple tokens uh, all over the place. Oh yeah, there's going to be those tokens down there. Are the lizard folk. You'll no, see. No, not, not the lizard folk. The same tokens as ours. Yeah, I did that. I took you guys originally from the throne room. I'm going to delete that now, and then we'll go in a little closer. The reason I did that was easy. I, I copy and paste out of areas. It's easy to do sometimes than dragging, but I can always zoom out and drag as well. Here, let's do this. I can drag everybody down to the area. Rick? Yes? When you get a chance, can you reread that what what was on what the three maps were? Oh, like, yeah. Like okay. Absolutely. Give me a second here and I would be glad to. Um, yep, I just need to see those guys are not there. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to select them. Hang on a kick. Got to move some of the lizard folk out of here, lizard folk out of here, lizard folk out of here. All right, and then I'll get rid of the other ones in that room. Oops. Hang on here. That way everybody's not seeing doubles and triples. All right, let's see. There's that and that. Okay, let's go back up here, and you were mentioning in here, um, I can't say words, Sword Coast in general. Rick, would my Dancing Light spell be able to substitute as bait for both a moving being possible? Because, again, as you know, a lot of the um, creatures in, in the swamp, like animals, aren't necessarily smart enough to discern that it wouldn't be like a, a, a torch or something like that. Yeah, and Kalim Shan, it is C-L-I-M-S-H-A-N. That, that is it right there. It's Kalim Shan. It is, best way to put it, it would be the um, Iran and Iraq of this world. It is a, it is, it has a definite Arabian night Persian flair to it, um, but different. It's got its own little spin. It's it's not what because the unfortunately Toril has two different areas like that. So uh, thanks, <laughs> uh, Zakara. Zakara is also it's somewhat. It was what was Al Kadim back in first edition. Unfortunately, I think they could have done a much better version of Al-Kadim. It, it, it would be more Sahara Africa as well as Sahara Middle East is what it would be. So Z is that what the other map is? Or? Yeah, Zakara. Those, the, that's Zakara. And then there is another one called Maztica. And Maztica is where the... Um, Incan, Mayan, and Peruvian type of uh, people would be. 
It's the one that you see the Savage um, Island for. Remember the old editions, they had the Savage Island where they had the dinosaurs and all that. <laughs> that was based off of Mazteca. Okay. And, and Mazteca is that area. It's it, it literally, I mean, it, it's like literally being dropped into 1,100 to 1,300 Mexico, um, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, all those areas. And, and how those people would have been at that time. So the other map was Zakara, is that right? Yeah, Zakara Zakara is a ah, God, it's it's such a rich area. It's it's Africa and Sahara like um, uh, Libya and um, Tunisia and those areas, that is their version of it. And there's a lot of genie, like with Kalim Shan, there's a lot of genie influence there. There were the genie wars. Again, I'm just saying this as players, what you may know. Characters, you, you won't know that as much unless you have the history. But these were the areas. Now, you know Balaam is from Kalim Shan. So if you have questions about Kalim Shan, he could easily tell you about Kalim Shan. As is Lyric. Lyrics originally from Kalim Shan, the northern part of it, that borders Tether and that area. So she is from the jungles out there. Even though she has a white fur, like the north, she's not from the north originally. She's more from the equatorial areas. Um, Nicodemus is is from Salt Marsh. Now his family water deep in that area. So he's more from what would be traditional Sword Coast. <gasps> Got the animals going. The birdies are going today. You know what that is, my dog? He makes it's, the strangest aw. noises. He's <laughs> right. <laughs> it sounds like a balloon squeaking sometimes. <laughs> I just begging for attention. There we go. You're not paying attention, darn it. Oh. So. And the birds are actually sleeping. Okay. okay, so the token does work. Good. All right. Yeah, sometimes you do need a refresh with roll 20 if you have problems. You just have to do a refresh of the screen. Um, let's see. Hoping the movement might get its attention. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. And see, you could use it for a lure or bait. You could see how that would work. Now, the swamp area I have everybody at right now is just to the other side of the village, maybe 500 yards, where the waterways are. And that's where they fish. Unfortunately, this thing has come into their area and is causing chaos. Mm. Just the alligator. Yeah, they use the word alligator, though you're kind of wondering, alligator, crocodile, which which really is it? Um, so. Did he tell the shape of his head? Yeah, and they, they don't really describe it. I know you agreed. You can tell by the shape of the head, but they really didn't say a lot when it was... Um, with what they were describing. Though, uh, though so you could uh, ask. You could ask. Uh, so we know a large, an alligator ambushed by there, so the best way to lure one would be to stand at the water's edge and tap the water. Mmm. That's good. Large, like large, large the fish won't cut it, as they're not scavengers, they're ambush predators. Ah. Nicely done. Give yourself uh, 75 experience for knowing that, but you would know things like that, being that you have gone on the seas and you've landed in many exotic areas with the ships. Nicely done. So who's the quickest of us? Hmm, that is a good question. Yeah. In terms of the reflex. Not me, because I am quite slow. Mm. They... they 
see to answer your question no it is not a green dragon though in the rumors you have heard in some of the bars you guys were in in salt marsh there is supposedly a black dragon down here somewhere in the mirror of deadman and you could use fish but again i agree and and as well said by Wolf on this one with with um, uh, Captain Bonnie is that they are ambush predators and they they go with movement and splashing around the edge of the water. Yeah, green dragon. Yeah, it would be a very unfortunate situation. Green dragons are sure. not good things to want to encounter in this world. Sure. So someone's going to need to stand at the edge of uh, of the of the river with meat or or something, and then trying to get out of the way as it launches at them. Yep. <laughs> if you want to, I mean, that's you guys can discuss how you want to do this. Uh, By the way, if they, if they do chase you, they are fast in a straight line, but they cannot turn for shit. <laughs> All these fun facts. I love. I love that you know all these fun facts. They're good facts. I mean, it's really. They're real good facts. On yeah, that's exactly also, how they are. Also, they don't have a lot of stamina either. So. Yeah, they're not. Well, they aren't going to run across the land. Not near. No. But their tail can take them at high velocity, whatever direction they're aimed. Definitely. Dogs still have them in there. All right, so I have to use my. All right, so I gotta get out my monster manual. I thought I'd had them out in my monster cards, but I do not. So, what does the party want to do? I'll be the bait. And then we could use the fish as bait instead of using one of the. Yeah. I'll accompany Veritas on being the bait. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'll let the party come to a consensus. Whatever plan you want to do. How much rope? That all depends, um, Akisha, on what you guys brought. I, again, I don't know what you guys brought off the boat. I will say a reasonable amount because rope can be heavy. I mean, like a 50-foot coil of rope, you, any any of you could carry easily on you as adventuring gear. Yes, I would. But, but yeah, let me know. I mean, you Why guys you can move. You guys can move around however you want to move on the map. Um, let's see. Does Nick and Demas have any thoughts on that one? Um, is there any big? Is there any big sticks around this or trees? Oh yeah, there? yeah. There's some fallen um, wood and and flotsam that's around right near the shore where you guys are. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find the biggest, longest one I can find. Okay. okay. Uh, make for make a perception check to see, or actually survival. Use your survival. That would be more um, in line than the other. Let's see. And she would have. Yeah, would that be an advantage rule? Yes, on that one because it's class skill. Oh, nicely done. That's a natural for um for lyric. All right, so 23, yes, you find a nice size, what looks to be tree branch, um, about the size of uh, just slightly smaller than a forearm in, in circumference, but still pretty big. Did, uh, anyone, get, did anyone get any meat? Uh, that's a good question. Do any of you guys carrying meat? I know, I don't think, um, Freya, you, are you a meat eater or not? Certain ones I know were and weren't as elves. Uh, well, I probably wouldn't be. No, I would think you're probably much more vegan than... Yeah. Because of where you lived and, and where you grew up. Um... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you do do... She is a meat eater, but no alcohol. And then, Silver, are you a meat eater as a moon elf or not? 
each elf is kind of different when it comes to that. And maybe are you there, Yumi? She did she have, have to go and see a son, maybe. Ah, okay. So what do you think, Mike? Would would her elf be a meat eater nope. or not? Okay, so nope. no. No. Much more vegan. All right. So yeah, they wouldn't know as much, but Freya would um, on that, or any of you that that are um, any of you that are meat eaters could have salted meat with you of sorts. I don't hey. think any fresh. I did have some because I brought rations with me. Okay. It would be a long journey. Hey, do we have any wire or rope? Um, I thought so. Yukiha has. They have, they have some, yeah. don't they, Haven? Yes, they do have some, and they are more than willing to use them. Okay. And they don't okay. Have sure. Specifically, a fishing lure with them as well, because that is what they do for a living. That's not really. I have good actually. What I'm going to do is tie the rope to the meat and the meat and the and the and the stick. I'm going to use my weapon to cut my hand up and then spread the crust oh, nice. and into the water. All right, so you will take um, a point of damage off your hit points. All right, so Freya, bait, dots, endpoints, what do you think? Yeah, you can say where you want to put um, the, the, the things. Do you want to do it right near where the dots are right now? Or let me see, what, what do you guys see? Let me open it up for what everybody sees. Because you guys, we have dark vision that's involved and different things. So I will give. Um, all right. Uh, let's open this up to reveal area. About this area I, right here is what everybody can see fairly well. There's a little. Well, where, go ahead. Where's the. Where's the creature being spotted mostly? Mostly south of those little island-like things. That they're not necessarily islands, but they're dry land in between the marsh water that's there. Most of that water is looks deep and brackish. It, it definitely has a smell of both brine and of um, uh, a brackish sort of swampy smell, which... Any of you that has nature, make a knowledge nature roll on that. So, can you, did you, could you ping where it's been seen? Uh, let's see. All right, let me do this. Hang on here. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, let me see if I can ping. I'm not great at ping. Um, I'll do this here. Yeah, there you go. You guys are better at the pings than me. Um, I will say down this way right here. Is where it's been seen more down that way and more out this way as well right so it's hunting grounds clearly this area here yeah so that opens it up well sure. enough everybody can see yeah it's, it's down in this southern area now let's see knowledge nature we got a 21 with Yukiha so they did good um, Willow got a 23 and Shadow got a 10. So the 21 and 23, the both of you being the fact that you're outdoors, the fact that Yukiha is a, um, a fisher folk, uh, dang, nice roll and give yourself uh, a, uh, a re-roll on that one, Akisha. Good lord, you're starting off strong. Oh, and add another one because your passive perception, I rolled a natural 20 on as well. So you get two re-rolls this round. And and I do that. If I roll everybody's passive perception, and if I roll a natural 20, I'll let you know and say you have a re-roll. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think the three of you, between Freya and Willow and Yukiha, the three of you come to the consensus that brine, salt water, swamp, it's not going to be an alligator. It's a crocodile. They, they have confused the meaning because, as you know, alligators don't do well with salt water. They don't like it. Where crocs don't care. They'll go into the mouth and almost into the shallows of salt water. 
So that's a whole I'm, nother animal in how you approach it. I am, I am, okay, I'm going to go you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, then we must take care of our condition. Because these saltwater crocodiles, from what I have read, are extremely dangerous. Mm-hmm. And could easily make short work of an elk or a kobold. Yeah, and and you, I have to, go ahead. I I do have to disagree with Freya and Yuki's approach. Though so we want okay. the alligator off land, so we it's it's best for us to do it on edge. So one of us will have to be at the edge and then jump back and last as they approach. And then we can get some of us that are bigger, stronger folks at the side and to push it over on its back, and then. Another two to uh, tie his mouth shut. I told you we're doing well. <laughs> well, is having a rough go. She is right now. She is right now still the blue color of the north. She's having a hard go of this one. Putting this and and and, and, and it's scary because she is the druid of your group. So if she's doom and gloom, this is probably not a good exercise. So I've I've on I volunteered to, to try and lure it to the land. Alright. We will need we will need two to flip it over on its back and two to um seal its mouth shut. Alright. I, lo- I love to use the thing. <laughs> I'm close to the R two D two screech and one <laughs> with the screech with the with the with a high shrilly scream T and run in the other direction. Uh, all right. So, if you want to do that, position yourself. Then um, now the question is. How do you want to do this? I, I know, I think, T, you said Shadow's going to follow whoever goes close to the shore, correct? So I will... That's correct. All right. So if I... Captain Bonnie's going to go down there, then T, go ahead and follow him and, and shadow him back. Now, what are you going to arm yourself with um, in that case? My, me? Uh, uh, for... Yeah, you can put you, because you're going to be holding the bait, but uh, Shadow Moon, which is Terrence, is going to be following you. He's the drow. So I'm going to I'm gonna move here to the edge. You're going to have to release my token. Oh, okay. Hang on here. Let me... Um, it may not be under you. I think we, we did it because you weren't there the one time. So. And I'm going to... Right, hang on here. Let's see. There I we couldn't um, get the stats of my new dagger either on the. Oh, okay. Video. All right. Let's see. Hang on here. I will. What I can do on that one is let me go up here to you, Shadow, and then this, and then you had your dagger. So let's do a new one. I'll do a new one here below yours. Let's add one. We'll put a plus one dagger. Um, you want to, I, I'm going to put it on the decks for the thrown one as the attack. Okay. And then okay. the magic bonus in there as well. Um, crit range on those is what? Is it a 19 on daggers? 19, 20? Uh, I think it's 20. All right. It's just a 20. All right. And it's a D6 and then plus your strength plus one. And in this case, it'll be piercing, but you know you can also do it for slashing as well. Correct. So, and then the crit is 1d6. All right. So that should give you what you need. Take a look. If you want to do a practice roll on it, just let me know. Um, and then you just click on it and do your practice roll. Make sure everything comes No, it's up. on there. We're good. All right. So you, then you should be, I'm going to put, let's see, you got it. I'm going to just put shadow on there for right now and then control by and I should be able to give it to you. There you go. All right. Save okay, uh, All right. Before this plan goes ahead, um, Lord sort of takes a huge sigh and she's like, 
I suppose this is gonna go ahead, whether I like it or not. So, indeed, so, she turns into a crocodile, and she's gonna go and look for it. Oh wow! All right, I like that. <laughs> what? Sorry. She is She's literally, going. as a druid, is going to shift shape and become a crocodile herself. Yep, I'm going to go see if I can find the thing. All right. Let's get out a token for you. I like this tact. Ooh, big right. males, white territorial. See yep. if I can lure it back. There you go. That is you. And I will is assign it to you if I can. Let's see. Can I? I yeah. would. Oh. The blood's going to be enough to lure I feel. All right, so this will be uh, Willow Croc. <laughs> and then I will put Willow under there. All right. So, Mary, what can you tell me about the goddess of the sea that I... Um, um, Ishtia. That's a good question. Let me see what I can tell you. I have a actual thing that talks about her that I printed off today. Um, how does she feel about her, her sea creature? All right, so Ishtia... Ishtia is actually she is and, and they put it as a god. I'm making Ishtia or uh, is is Tishia is Tishia. I God, I mispronounced that horribly. Is Tishia? I wrote it wrong on there too. Is Tishia is the tempest. Um, their symbol is a wave. They're neutral in their worshippers overall and neutral as a goddess. About the waves, the winds, the storms. So Istitia handles that. Where Valcor is another version of the Tempest. He is a Northlander god of sailors. And he has the three clouds with the lightning bolt. So they are very similar. Istitia would be more worshipped in the southern lands. So from Am... A-M-N, the, 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 the country of Am, which is spelled A-M-N, on down through Kalim Shan to Zakara, is Tishia would be very widely worshipped, where Valkur would not. Valkur would be worshipped all the way up to the Ten Towns. In fact, um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? I, I blanked on it. Um, Yukiha would, they would know about Valkor, because Valkor would be worshipped by a lot of the sailors, the fisher folk up in that area. There are other gods and goddesses of the sea, but those are the two main ones that deal with storms. If that makes so, sense. I'll be here, I'll be here, um, baiting the crocodile to come up. I said, we need two to flip over on its back and Two, so three here and here and here. Okay. And two more and two more here and here. All right. Two. So I will put some red. Hang on here, and you let me know where you like the bait. So you want the bait like here? No, the bait. Would the bait be attached to a stick? Ah, okay. Uh, hang over, hang. Because I'm near the water. I'll be hanging over the water. All right. So it's out here and, like this. Covered in. Covered in my blood, dripping uh, into the water. All right. This plan's all really nice and great, but <laughs> we got a couple of problems. We have no strong characters. We have mostly elves who are yeah. quick and fast. Yeah. We have well, nobody who's, who's going to. We have nobody to flip an alligator or a crocodile no. or whatever this thing is to flip it, to pin it, and to, to tape its mouth. Basically, we have two options. We have two options. We kill it, or we get out of here. And to tell the lizard people, and eh, we couldn't do it. So, lyric. Or, 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 I'm trying to negotiate with the croc and ask it to move away. Oh, I like it. Do you, are we'll you gonna, try and ask it to move region. All right, so where are you going to put yourself? Go, you can move that croc I put up there with you. Um, a up lovely towards token. the water. Yeah, so you can move it wherever you want her to go before the baiting goes. So just move it. Okay. I mean, I have the worst charisma possible, so it's unlikely I'll be able to convince it, but so I can try. do a perception check. Now, the rest of you, position yourself where you want. I've moved the NPCs, so as you can see, Balaam's near the water. He's got his cutlass out. Um, Lyric has her... 
<laughs> she's got her witch bolts coming up where needed. Okay, so you want that's a good place to put Yuki Haas right near Lyric. Because Lyric is a pretty yeah, much an offensive weapon when it comes. She she is a you Ha begins to figure out they they figure out that Lyric is a warlock, a definite warlock, because um, she has a symbol of she has a weird symbol. Uh, it's a lantern that's around her neck. It's in silver, but it's it's a lantern. What looks to be a lantern. Um, you can make a knowledge religion if you have it. I, I think I do. But give me one second. Okay, no problem. All right, so near the bank, ready to cast. <laughs> Gonna burn some crocodile posterior. <laughs> All right, and then where do you want to? Um, you can you can move Mike Yumi wherever you think for her to heal and do other offensive things. <laughs> if you want to put her down near Veritas, or are you back, Yumi? Yeah, I just got back. Okay, good. Uh, I want to play whack a croc. <laughs> okay, so move her up to the water. You can put her near Balam because Balam is probably a good bet. He's not going to dance into the mouth of the croc if he can help himself. Um, Are we? Uh, I still see that one map. You okay. look, move down to the right and towards the center of that map, and you will see an open area. What looks to be a swamp, oh, okay. area. and you're down there. Yeah, the whole party's down there. That's that little swamp area. Beautiful. Right out. You can be on one of the islands if you want. You just have to do a, um athletics check to hop across. If you do an okay. athletics 10, you can easily hop across the swamp water. No problem. I want you to jump the truck leaves out of the water. And go. Yeah, God, wouldn't that be bad? That would be a really, a, really bad thing. Was your cleric. Okay, so knowledge religion, you think it's a fey patron of hers you've heard of one by the name of nig ng he is the lantern holder you think maybe that could be her patron because you know warlocks make packs even as a kobold you know that that's something that is is well-known knowledge all right, nice jump. All right, so you are across, so move yourself. Good jump across. And no, the croc does not come out and snap its snap your leg as you go across. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. Let's do an initiative. So everybody open up your character sheets if you're used to it, and you just click on the initiative, and it will roll it. Now, what you have to do before you do this. All right. All right, so... Let me do this quickly. I'm going to put everybody off there. You want to click on your token and then click on the initiative. Otherwise, it won't come up. Yep, it'll see what it Perfect. Is. All right. So let's get them. Uh, there's Balam. So you click onto them and then click and then onto the initiative. There's Balam. Let's do Lyric. And that way, then it assigns it to your marker and puts you up in there. And then, let's see, there's Nicodemus. Nico. Can I take my first initiative? It was, um... Oh, did I? I'm sorry. If I did, then re-click on it again and re-roll it. I'll give you the re-roll of it. And if it's better... No, no, I'll just change it to 20.17. Okay. No problem. Yeah, just re-roll it and click on it and put it, type it in. You can type it in and then hit return and it'll work just fine. You know, if you've used this before, you know how to do it. And then once you get it in there, I'll sort it out. Um, let's see. I want to sort it by descending. Perfect. Nice. All right. Good stuff. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead and type yours in, and I'll do descending again. That way I put it in the right order. There we go. God, you roll good. That's a nice 20 on an initiative. All right, so let me do Crocky. Crocky gets. Ooh. All right. That's interesting. Yep. All right. So, I love my wooden dice. I got some of those wooden dice off of... Uh, Talon and Claw. And if you like dice, if you're a dicey like me, Talon and Claw. 
They're twenty bucks for a wooden dice, and they're gorgeous. Gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous, see, gorgeous. They're so pretty. They are. I mean, Talon and Claw does a great job. They have them off of Etsy. Etsy is where their main site is to order it. But man, really, really nice dice. Um, all right. So, Willow, going into this, make a perception check because you're in the water for movement. And, and just to perceive if it's anywhere in the, the distance of you or there's any movement that would give away that it's there in that area. Wow. Yes, kitten. What's up? Oh, uh, my kitty's just coming. Crying, so. That's Cassie. It's lover kitty. T remembers Cassie. It's the one with the white diamond. She is the ever lover kitty. She rolls over and with the bunny paws and lets you pet her belly and everything else. So she's my nutball, as I call <laughs> it. All right, perception of 21. No, it is not anywhere within probably a 30-foot radius of you. Okay. All right, so you are putting, Captain Bonnie is putting the, the bait out. And, as expected, <laughs> up it comes. It is right in the area, and it is quite large. The token size is exact for what it is. Okay, so Captain Bonnie, your armor class is 20. Um, I will let you do this since you are ready, and since you readied yourself for this situation, mm. I will let you do a reflex save when I roll my attack. If the reflex save is greater than my attack roll, you will avoid it. You will jump out of the way of it. Okay, now, T, since you are ready, if you want to add to that, you can roll a athletics check. Your athletics check is 15 or better. You can add a plus 2 to Captain Bonnie's jump roll out of the way in that situation. Because again, you are ready to the situation. All right, and its attack is all right. So this is going to be all right. So if you go on your character sheet, you will see your reflex roll. You can there you go, and then Shadow Moon. Oh, twelve. Did you have any? Nope, nothing to add to it. Dad coming. All right. So you weren't able to help him. So what you do is you're going to go in there and you're going to click on your reflex and it'll do the roll. I I'm got gonna... you. Oh, so you got a shot. I rolled pathetically. I roll a 6 plus 8 is 14. That won't hit you. But if you want to make sure that you are able to move back, this would be you basically rolling back. It's a defensive okay, maneuver. Okay. I can't find the reflex one. Um, the reflex one. If you go, hang on here. Oh, I'm sorry. It um, would be a deck save. God, I'm I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Pathfinder. It is a deck save. And if you have advantage on it, in other words, it has a check on it, then you can roll advantage. Which means you'll click the roll, and it'll come up and say advantage, and you say yep. Put the roll with advantage. And that will let you... Beautiful. The 20. What direction do you want to go? You can get 10 feet any direction out of its area. You pick the way you want to... Base. Yeah, there you go. All right. So now it is in sight. You sense it also, Willow. And Captain Bonnie, you get to do your action. It is sitting there with its mouth open and hissing. Because it missed. Okay, I am going to. Um, All right, let me. Is the is the um, is the mouth open or closed? The mouth is open, partially, not fully. It snapped it shut, and then it opened it enough, kind of like you see him do a little bit, and it hisses very loudly. I'm just ready for a. Uh, Mm-hmm. Nice rolls, everybody. <laughs> we didn't have Captain Bonnie get it. <laughs> it's a good thing. Awesome. 
Yeah, don't like. Oh yeah, the breath is horrible, and and that is therein knowledge nature check. Since you brought it up, Freya, make a knowledge nature check because this could be very helpful information for you. You know that if it bites someone, there's a there must be a four or a constitution save, otherwise they'll get some sort of a disease from the bite. Oh yeah. It lives in brackish swamp water, it eats creatures, the things rot in its teeth. Yep. How solid is the ground around this by the way? It is not very solid. It is very mucky. It's it's not like the peat bogs that are up near where you are that you'd sink down to your knee, but you're at least down to your ankle in it. You can maneuver. It's just not as good as... So you will go at a disadvantage normally on checks at certain places. So, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and loose its mouth real all right, so go ahead and do a... Sorry, Rick, is this yeah. class as difficult terrain? Yes, this would definitely... So that difficult. means you can only move half your movement speed. Correct, correct. Normally, now, because the creature hadn't surfaced, I had you guys move at a normal speed, but in combat, you are correct. It is only half your speed. Unless... You're like a ranger where your native ground is in the swamps or areas like if you're, that. Or if you're a crocodile. Or you're a crocodile, exactly. <laughs> Which your move speed, by the way, let me give you your move speed. So It's 20 to walk and 30 to swim. I've got the stats up here. Oh, you're good. See, look at you. Mm. You got your monster manual open, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I love so you, Monsieur Emmanuel. So are you a normal crocodile or are you a giant? I wish I was a giant. All but right, I'm not so you're just a normal. Level yet. Okay, yeah. the one you're looking at is a giant one. Now, knowledge nature will give you some some things there, as you know. Any of those knowledge natures will help you. And survival for those that don't have knowledge nature, survival check can be sub subbed in as well for this type of terrain. All right, so Captain Bonnie, go ahead and do. You're going to do a. Dex check plus your proficiency on there. So if it's a plus two or plus three for your class, add that to your dex, and you can do it. Just click on the d20 that's in that little column on the side and just add it in there. Yeah. So my dex is so it's one d20 plus. Am I doing one d20 plus what? Sorry. Plus, you're going to do do a D20 plus your proficiency as a fighter, which will be a plus two for the proficiency bonus. So plus two prof for the proficiency plus your dex modifier. 1D20 plus two. Yep. What's that? Yeah, if, if, your, if your dex... Ooh, yeah, nope. You threw, and it, it, it moved its head out of the way as you chucked it over. It, it saw what you were going to do. All right, so are you going to do any move actions? You can do a half move on the terrain. I'll move here on the side. And by the way, each of these are five-foot squares, if anyone's wondering. Okay. Yeah, it's, its nose, by the way, is pointed where the red thing is right now. It snapped on that and tried to get you, too. But it definitely took this the bait and is crunching it, yeah. This one here? Yep. Or this one? Yep, right there where, where you had pinged on. That's exactly the direction it is facing right now. Its eye is still kind of watching you, because as you know, they have their eyes on the side of their head. So their one eye is watching you. But again, you don't know how well it sees distance-wise. They're normally an underwater viewing deal. Yeah. They're normally not solitary either. It's got me worried. Yeah. And this one is old looking. It has moss on it. It is easily 10 foot long. It is a nice size. And it's it looks, its hide looks like it has been hit before by things and is taking gouges out of it. So it has been attacked before. 
maybe by other crocs, maybe by other creatures, maybe by sharks off the reef. Again, you don't know. It, it just looks like it has been roughed up. That's a magnificent creature. Mm. You're, you're guessing from your background probably easily 25 years maybe it's been around. Which is unusual because most of these don't last that long. But you are right, they are alive. Mm. <laughs> well, that's me. All right, so next one is Balam. Balam gives a curse out in in Kalashami, and does a. Let's see, he's gonna do a leap over. All right, where is his athletics? There it is, and it's normal roll, and hopefully he doesn't wipe himself. Oh, that's lovely. That uh -huh. did not go well at all, and he leaps and ends up in the water in between with a huge splash. He is up to his neck in the water, and you can see that, Silver. That's not a good place. Um, he's going to <laughs> put himself defensive as best as he can, but with a, with a cutlass, it's not a good situation. So, Balam looks like he is in trouble. All right, it is their turn, Yukiha. Okay, so Yukiha is going to load his bow and is going to take aim at the crocodile. All right. Hoping to to strike them in the neck. All right, take a shot. Hopefully, it'll be a natural twenty for you. I hope so. Um, it is oh, con considered a huge Freya and Akisha. Go ahead. Oh, nice strike! You do. You go right through its hide, and it sinks in very deeply. So roll your damage. Very nicely done. All right, let's see. Where's my pencil? There it is. And it's got... Okay, and then I still have one action left, right? Nicely done, yeah. You do. You do. That's all right. I want to... In this direction. Okay. I will... Hang on here. I'll expand this a little bit. Um, I can expand it to about here. So if you want to move back a little bit, if you go farther, just let me know. Because, again, you've got a good range with a, a Yumi bow. It's a nice, as you know, short range is 150. So. Nice. So then I will actually take more than that, but I put step back. I'll step like 15 feet back. Okay. Up to this point. All right. No problem. All right. So that sounds good. Let me... Um, Let's bring it back on so that way you can see it, but I will put that it's farther out. I'll make a note. So you take a 15 foot. All right. Perfect. Um, Lyric. All right. She curses and goes, Die, you foul creature. And she hisses at it. Which you don't see her do much. But she is not amused with this creature. All right. Witch Bolt. There we go. And she will do her re-roll because she does not like that situation and how it rolled. And she'll use one of the re-rolls off of her. All right. Which bolt number two. And that didn't go any better, did it? Nope, not really. <laughs> so her witch bolt just glazes off of the hide. That's how thick it is. And it's like an oh crap moment. And then she moves down this way five feet. Yeah, I know, Keisha. Didn't go well on that one. <laughs> She normally has some better rolls, but it is not a good day for Lyric. Shadow, it is your turn. What do you want to do, T, my friend? I was already ready. I had a 
arrow notched already. Nice. Do your shot. Let loose. You're literally almost point blank range, is what you are. Should be able to. There you go. Oh no! A natural one. You can, if you got re rolls, which you do, you have two or three, if I remember correctly. This would be the time to use them, definitely. Because that's a critical fail, and I do have my fumble deck ready. <laughs> I do have it ready. And yes, I am using the decks off of Paizo's fumble and critical decks. So you want to re-roll it, bro? <laughs> Yeah, I'll go ahead and re-roll. Yeah, I figured you might. <laughs> Although it would be exciting to see what the fumble would be. I can tell you if you want to know. <laughs> nice. The 16 will hit. The fumble would have been uh, recoil. You move backward one square and fall prone. Oh, that, that would have be been nice, enough. though, for me. Yeah, well, yeah, you prone is not necessarily a bad thing, so. All right, well, do your damage. That one is a solid thock into its tail and hits it really well. We need a natural 20 roll on somebody. I want to pull out the deck. Because, again, what I do, you'll get your normal double, but you could get another modifier on there. Oh, <laughs> My God! Uh, put your strength Aww. in there too. What's your your strength? You don't have any bonuses, do no. you? <laughs> you suck at strength. <laughs> so though he looks intimidating, shadows intimidating, and he is movement wise, strength wise, he just doesn't sink it as deep as you thought he would have. Uh, all right, that takes us to Veritas. Yes, Veritas, go for it my friend okay so i'm gonna slide over here <laughs> i'm gonna pull the big blue dummy out of the water <laughs> but i'm like oh crap <laughs> get me out of the water i am not having a good day not i will roast it later All right, so roll a... Basically, what you're going to be doing is an athletics check to pull him out. Okay, this is going to go horribly wrong. Yeah, I'm, no. calling, I'm calling it right now. I'm going to get a one. I'm going to go in the water, too. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. All right, let's see if you're right. You said, you said athletics? Yes. Yep, I'm going in. <laughs> I love Akisha's reaction. Oh. No! You just pull him out of water like it was nothing. <laughs> He's like, get out of there. Pull him up to the shore, and he thanks you as you're pulling him out. <laughs> and he lands right near Freya. Oh, good job on that. Nicely done, Mike. I love it. And uh, give yourself 50 experience for thinking that one up. I like that. Just get him out of the water <laughs> so he doesn't die. And yes, I do do that for the newbies. I do do uh, for really cool things that you're doing or well thought out things. You do get experience for them. Absolutely. Good role play, good things. And, and, you know, I'm not hard judge on any of that stuff when it comes to it. Freya, quick last block. <laughs> well, I'm wet. I don't smell good. <laughs> I, I probably smell like I fell into a pot of muck. No, yeah, gonna... no, it's not a good day for me. <laughs> he <laughs> says with a wicked look in his face. Yeah, if you ever if you ever been in a swamp and you like get stuck in a in a bog or something, you bring your foot out and oh. that all that mud and gunk comes with it and the smell comes over it. Yeah, it's... so now I I smell and he smells. Yeah, you guys smell horrific right about now. But again, the nice thing is you kind of mask your other smell that would be appetizing to any other creature in the swamp. You have that yuck smell to you going on. Yeah, your your nose wrinkles, Freya, when you ask him. I mean, it it literally is like whoa. <laughs> Yeah, you, you definitely think he needs a bath very quickly. 
Okay, and I'm done. <laughs> done with my turn. <laughs> I caught that fresh mud facial. <laughs> that comes from the other campaign. Yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> All right, so someday I'll tell you about that one and, and address to you and her stuff. It was hilarity. That's all I can say. Um, all right, so we're to Nicodemus. Nicodemus is like, oh, oh, this is not good. Not at all. My friends will not die on this day. And he does his Cloud of Daggers spell at the croc. And the crocky takes ten slashing. And I have to do... I believe the cloud it gets... Does it get a save? I don't think it does. Let me take a look here real quick in my players. I don't think it gets a save. Um, hang on here. But it may be a ranged spell. Okay, so... Cloud of daggers, 60 foot. The air fills with spinning daggers a creature takes when it enters the area. So no, it doesn't get a save. It just gets to take damage. So it took 10, 10 points of Ginsu damage as the daggers are spinning around and, and slicing it up. It is not amused at this point. It is looks enraged. Bleeding. All right, so that takes us to Willow Croc. All right, Willow Croc. I'm gonna do a swim. Uh, and you can navigate well. Being in this form, it's a little bit, takes a little bit of getting used to, but you swim it pretty good. So now I'm gonna make like crocodile noises and like, hey! Hey, you better come over here. Quick! And I try and shout it over. All right, so see if you get the the intent, intent across. Do your uh, persuasion check on it. This is not good. And you can add a plus two because you are in croc form. Or no, actually, do you have... Let me see, what else do we have on there that is that I could stack with that? Because you would have... Um, do you have any, oh you do have animal handling. Here's what I will yeah, say. And, and instead of your persuasion, also, use the animal handling. Oh okay, cool. I also I also have this. So I like can speak to them really fluently. Good. All right. So do do your animal handling instead. Since you do have awesome. it. Awesome. Much better. Mm-hmm. And if you get better than a 15, it may come your direction. But yeah, you're right. It's a better roll. Oh, Dan. Can I re-roll that? Do you want to re-roll it? You can. You can no. either, if you either have it, if you either have, I gave you an inspiration, you yeah, can re-roll it with that. I have, I have two, actually, yeah. All right, so one. use your inspiration or you can use your d20 re-roll. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, it's worse. <laughs> no, it just doesn't think it's going to come your direction right now. Not that you can't use it next round, but for right now, it's just not. It, it is intent on eating the things It near. did hear me, though. It oh, did hear yeah, me. It yeah. It ignored me. It's just, yeah, it's right now ignoring you. Okay, well, that's something at least. Yeah. No, you got through. You definitely spoke its language. It's more of a leave me alone, I've got a meal to eat type of okay. thing. I've, so, got, I've got a strategy. <laughs> there okay. you go. All right, Freya. Akisha, it is yours. Oh, nice. You guys, for the new folks that are here, not used to her magic missiles, they don't look like a standard magic missile. They look like icicles flying out of her hand of force, hitting this creature like icicles. It's pretty cool. Her, her little crafted thing on being a northern... Elf. <laughs> it is. She spent some time working on that. Oh, yeah, you do. That's right. 
Sweet. I love it. You're going to have some fun with those. All right. So you're going to do any movement after that, um, Freya, on that after you cast? Or are you just going to stay put? Or do you want to do some movement with something else? Use your movement to do something else. Oh, yeah. Fourth myth. Oh, nice. Another two off. I love it. All right. It looks injured. It does not look like it's going to die, but it looks significantly injured. All right. Um, Silver, you're out on the island. You could easily, for your movement, just do a roll on your athletics, and then you can swing. You'll be in swinging range. Because it'd be like you're jumping from one island solidly, doing like a long jump over to the thing. Imagine, yeah, with a swirl of tiny. I love that. That was well crafted out. I am going to instead cast Guiding Bolt. Nice. I like that. Are you going to... You can do the Guiding Bolt if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Do they get a save with it or not? I forget. I don't see a save. On okay, the then no save. If it doesn't say it gets a save, then it doesn't. All right. I love it. 23. Ooh, wow. All right. Yeah, you definitely solidly do your damage. Good golly. Yeah, that's so. Ow! All right. It is enraged. It, it now, now, so... Now, Willow, on anything you try to do, it's going to be at a minus two on your roll. It is enraged. Okay. Beyond all belief. And it is going. Let's see. Where is it going to go? It's got shadow. It's got silver. Yeah. It's going to go for you, silver. It, it's, it's not amused anymore. It does its swim, and it takes a bite at you. It is just losing its mind. And the tail won't be able to, since it doesn't move, it won't be able to get its multiple attacks. All right. So that's the good part. <laughs> the bad... Oh, my God. I rolled a two. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. You have the luck of the players on your side. That is the worst roll I have rolled tonight. Way to go. The party misses. It is so enraged, it just misses. It's flailing around, biting, and not doing very well. And Captain Bonnie, it is your roll now that it has miserably failed to bite Silver. Jeez. And also, after this round, if anybody needs a bio break, just let me know. And we'll take a five-minute bio break. We'll go through the order, and then when we get past Silver, it will take a break if everybody wants. <laughs> Where's the meat? My <laughs> money. Oh. He should never stop with the one-liners. You do make you do make the games this way. You really do. <laughs> uh. Are you there, Captain Bonnie? Wolf, you got to be there. Oh, there you are. Good. <laughs> I was hoping you were there. I'm like, did we lose him? Right, right, my turn. Yes, it is. And you can see the croc has moved towards silver. Matter yeah, I shall, than anything. I shall move up here. All right. And I shall... It looks like we're not kicking it in. About 15 feet away from it. I know it, it has a different distance. These are five-foot distances. Just ignore that with the arrow. You are uh, only 15 I have to use. <laughs> it's a tough decision. There you go. All right. 
So the 22 is a solid hit with the crossbow. Mm -hmm. Do your damage. How do I do the damage? Uh, you just click on the the thing um, afterwards again. If you click on it again. You click on the light crossbow word. Yeah, on the light crossbow word, and it'll do it. Oops, nope. Um, do on the, the light crossbow that's on the screen over there is what you do. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Go up to the one that you did up above and just click on that again on the, the chat side of it. All right. Sorry. There you go. Six points. Man, you, you have solidly attacked this creature and done so far around 55 points of damage to it. Not an easy creature. All right, um, Balam. Balam just gives a wail out of his mouth as he flies through the air with his cutlass coming straight down into its skull. He is not amused anymore. And you can see um, Silver and Veritas and Freya that his, his cutlass is crackling with electric energy. And, and salt water down it. He is just beyond happy. And he does an 11, which will not hit, but I will burn his advantage to re-roll it. And hopefully he'll get a nice reroll. Otherwise he's going to end up in the water again. And this won't be pretty. Alright. God. Can I roll suckier tonight? He is in the water again. In front of the croc. And I'll just move it back slightly. Silver looks very, very worried now. Yeah, Balam is not in good position. So you see this, um, Yukiha, what, what will they do <laughs> to this poor thing? Seeing all of this, um, knowing that it takes me an action to reload my Yumi, I will do that, and then we'll, we'll fire again at this beast. You, a natural 20 would be amazing right now. <laughs> I have to protect my party. Yep. <laughs> poor, poor Balam. He, he gets into more trouble some days. <sighs> oh, epic 19. Solid hit right near the eye. You hit it up in the skull. Awesome. That is a solid hit. Then we'll image. Wow! With that, not only do you sink it in, but you just see the lights, even from that distance, fading, and all of you can see it from the eyes of the crocodile as it just lays like a log in the water, pumping blood out of the wound. It's dead. Yukiha, with the major hit, takes down the croc. Yes, it was. <laughs> That'll be a fishing story for Yukiha later. Hi, honey. What's up? You okay? No. All right. So, since that is a nice takeout, let's go ahead and do a five-minute bio break. I'll put mine on mute, and we will convene back in about five minutes, if that's all right for everybody. All right. See you. All right. See you in five. What's wrong? <laughs> come, come. Mm. Thank you. That make the world better. It's a better child to put him away from hell. It's actually not the PlayStation. Just give the child a hug and not so much. She, she gives the pussy. She's in there. Dad has it where on Sunday, not 
tomorrow, but next Sunday. You can see her name. It's Willow on there. You'll see Willow. Hmm. And it, it's Miss Evie B. She's on there. Now, I don't have the mic up, but she is on there. Zodiac on. So I'll confirm What's with her. her player name? I, I don't we know. Will, we'll we get all get that information. I'll have her send all that information to me I'll, next we'll Sunday. Get her, we'll get her hooked up to your Minecraft. Program. I will let her know. I'll talk to Zodiac. Zodiac says um, what Helsinki said. Uh, we got to serve a pool of people. Mm -hmm. Because that was his way of trying to push the way until he's back to normal. Yeah, that's probably... I said, but here's the problem. And I sent the other messages. I said, this is what's so confusing. He went from this mm -hmm. to all of a sudden that. It's. And we had everybody there. T's there. All. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow.
Yeah, so she had her hot dogs. She wanted a snack. She had chips. You had a really good day today. Tomorrow, we're cleaning your room. Because if you want to lay down on your bed with your um, computer, we need to make sure your room's clean depending on what angle you want this to go. Now, I'm not so worried about every little nook and cranny because it's, again, a child. Yes, Cassie. It's, again, a child's room, so I'm not too concerned. Good job. You must. Oh my goodness, Dad! Look at the child's room. <laughs> it's a Buddha. Yeah, you got Buddha in your room. Look. Look under Dad. Buddha. Keep her there. Keep her there. Keep her there. Keep her there. She won't stay there. Nope, she's gone. <laughs> she's, she just wants the love. I know. Well, the next one you'll yeah, get to pick out. Next one we do, we'll make sure you get to pick one. All right. So I'm going to close this a little bit. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. All right. I'm back. Um, yay. Thank you, thank you. Had to get the little one's teeth brushed, help mom out, and then... So life is good. Um, and uh, Freya, she says hi to you too, Akisha. For the hi. Let's see. I have an idea. What if we present? That's a good idea. There you go. You guys could keep the meat or even some of the hide and then give them the head. That would be a very presentable gift, probably. Yeah, right now... <laughs> Right now, Balaam is in a foul little mood. He's not in his normal happy mood as he stinks of of the swamp and has done a horrific job of helping defend the party this time around. Oh, you stink. <laughs> oh. Yes, I know these. I not like it at all. I want to go away and just get the bath right now. But I don't know when that will happen. Maybe on the ship, if I'm lucky. So, he is, he definitely smells of the swamp, as does Veritas. <laughs> Veritas not as bad as him, but both are not smelling great right now. But yeah, you guys can take that back. Um, now, uh, Will, are you going to come back out of crocky form? No, I was just making a drink, and I was like, hmm. Do I remain a croc? Hmm, that's a, it's a tempting <laughs> thing sometimes. You're like, hmm, maybe. <sighs> Do you know what? I think because she's in such a foul mood and she doesn't really want to talk to anyone, she might stay as a croc for now. You definitely, you, you could definitely, Yukiha. In fact, Lyric praises you. She's like, very nicely done. That wasn't a very good shot. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. I... You're I was simply exercising my training, what my forefathers had taught me. Well, it was excellent. The shot was was clearly the kill shot. I am impressed. Yes. Thank you. And again, if a kitty could grin, you would see a grin come across her face. It's 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 a showing of teeth versus a grin. Her grins are kind of a little bit to get used to, but it is it's her. So, yeah. Uh, again, this is a nine foot long croc. You could take easily a good section of the hide for armor where it hasn't been roughed up. You would need to do a survival check. Um, with it if you want to do that real quick for me haven that way uh, we can see if uh, they can do a good job of skinning it to keep the you know, you know how a cat would uh if you want to stroke its head it would like rub its head onto you with like rubbing mm -hmm. um when freya comes to check on willow that's what she does she's like a crocodile acting like a cat like a kitten <laughs> <laughs> almost purring 
<laughs> Almost purring in a yes. crocodile kind of way. Crocodile. It's, it's a happy hiss. <laughs> 17 survival. Yes, you are able to take out a nice, about a five foot section from the top of the skin. Now, there is a little bit of marring for where it's been hit a few times, but it's healed over. So it has a good rough look. But you think that giving it to somebody that is a smith or a leather worker, you could have this done. In fact, when you cut it off, Lyric mentions, or actually, no, in this case, it is Nicodemus. Nicodemus walks up and goes, oh, well, you know, we have a leather worker in town. She she could do a wonderful job of turning that into either a cloak or a coat or into armor for you, if if you like, Yukiha. That would be most pleasing to me. Thank you very much. I Absolutely, I will. I will make sure I introduce you to her. She is quite the leather worker, and and does a tremendously good job. Her family has been in the business for years. That is good news. So great job. With that 17, you definitely get some of that. Give yourself 50 experience for deciding to take some of that as armor. And um, for you, Akisha, give yourself 50 experience for deciding to give the head. That's a nice trophy offering. And I think, Silver, you had the same idea, did you not, on the head? Uh, I didn't waste it. If that's okay, if you did, because again, I'll, I'll I will definitely award that on there. And T fifty four guarding over and making sure that we didn't lose um, our fine fine Captain Bonnie and Captain Bonnie fifty to you for the lure for the crocky. And then each of you will get for the crocodile itself. Let's see, 150 experience points each. So, croc equals 150 XP each. So, well done on the crocky hunt. All right. All right, um, so you guys going to head back and present that to the queen. You can get the meat off of there, no problem. Once you get the, the hide off of it, there's some nice chunks of the tail and, and meat that you could do. And maybe you could even take some back to the, the lizard folk that they could do into a feast. Mm. All right. Well, the party, and I'll move everybody back there. Let me uh, do this, and then I'll clear all these out of here so we got the clear order again. I think I'm going to make a small makeshift today for the mighty crop. They lived so long. Absolutely. So then we just got to convince Willow to come back out of crocky form. <laughs> See? Because <laughs> going I might just... I might have a crocodile tantrum. There you go. So, T, I'm going to move you out of, over there. I'm going to move the croc up here, and then I'm going to do this. Hang on. Let me move this croc over here, the body of it, and we will just copy the party, and I will move everybody over to the throne room again. Let's see. I'm sure by the time they get back, the village she will come out of it just in just in case Elizabeth think yeah that, uh, she's a threat yeah you don't want the queen to think that you're a threat that would probably not be a good thing and let me clear the drawings off of there so, oh. yeah, so right. by the time they get back to the village she'll so I'll just kind of crock, crock. everybody in here so everybody is in, and then the croc I'll get out of here, because really we don't need him anymore. So everybody brings in, I think I got everybody's deal. Yep, their shadow. We got everybody's deal here. So we, you guys come back, all of you come in as a group, the party does, and 
you could see the, sh the look of pleasant shock on the queen's face. And she says, oh, that's right. We didn't even think about Bims. Yeah, Bims would have sat. So I forgot to describe Wait, I I asked. I would have asked him to go and sit with Freya. But, um, Let me see. And Freya have been... Uh, I believe Emily. I have Bim somewhere in there, don't I? Um, if he's if he's okay, so if he agrees to it, if he would have said, "One sit with Freya. Freya will protect you." He sees that Bim's there. Nope, oh, that's our lizard guy. Um, where is Bim's? Let's see. Do I have? Is all right. So, oh, that that works out perfect. So I'm going to bring back an oldie but a goodie that was well known in the other group for the pseudo dragon token. This say hello to Pelish. This was Pelish in the other campaign. <laughs> I I think Akisha would remember oh. Pelish. Um, yeah, exactly. I saw the Pelish. We'll use Pelish for Bims because it has similar Bims has similar colors. So. Uh, Captain and uh, Yukiha make a roll for a knowledge nature to see if you recognize this. It looks like a little dragon that is on was on Freya's shoulder, but now has moved back to Willow's. Oh, <laughs> you you know it's a little dragon, but you don't know if it's a baby dragon or what it is. But it's some sort of a dragon sitting on her shoulder and whispering in her ear and and bim says to you i like this mistress you did you did well turning into one of them and and you tried you really did good says bims hey yukiha will explicitly ask um if you if I might ask, what type of is this? You can see the little head pop out and look at in, in amusement to Yukiha. And, and they're looking at them. And the dragon says, I am Bims. I am a, a I think you call a pseudo dragon? And it says it to you in. Hold on. Oops. I'm going to stay back in Volcanic. Oh, is that so? I do not know much about your kind. I'm, I'm from the far north, but I am pleased to meet you. Bims pops over and, and startles you onto your shoulder, kind of jumps off of Willows to your shoulder. And then the little head looks around, and, and it's just a little dragon's head, and it looks into your eyes and goes... You are dragon too, yes? Dragon sort. Yes, I am. A cabal. We are Vulcan people as well. And, and then you can see the glee as it dances on, as Bims dances on your shoulder and says, Oh, oh, I've met your kind before. They're, they're green ones and black ones and blue ones that run around in this swamp. Yes, yes. And you can tell... Otho Kent, the queen, is once again amused by this situation. Not insulted, even in the slightest, but just amused that, that Bims is happy. How small is Bimsley? Because Yugiha is less than two feet tall, so... It, it, it takes up your whole shoulder. Bims is pretty tall. Stands well above your head. Um, probably just under a foot, maybe? Slightly, the wingspan though goes bigger. The wingspan would go almost almost two feet, but Bims has the wings folded when when sitting on your shoulder. So, but you can feel the weight. I mean, it's, there's some weight there. Bims is not a light pseudo dragon. I am struggling to stand in the world to ask Bims. Uh, so, uh, how old are you? I like, since he's a kid. I am five? Yes, five of, 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 of creature years. 
she and Bim says, "Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry," and and flutters off of your and to fly in front of you, just kind of hovers. Says, "I did not mean to weigh you down, Bim. Sorry." No, it's okay. It's okay. You didn't weigh me down. It's okay. What? Like uh, I say informally. Bims likes you. You nice. I I likes you. And, and and turns towards Evie and goes, Mistress, I like I like new one. Yes. Yes, our new friend is 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 quite quite lovely. Oh yay! Maybe we talk more. B Bims likes talking, and 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 then flutters back to to Willow's shoulder. And, and it's almost like it, Bims is happy. You can tell. The coloration goes a much brighter purple. And and Bims is almost in, in just happy, happy mode. To have somebody that Bims can relate to. I'm really glad you're happy, Bims. I am. I am. I like this new group. Yes. Not that I don't like the queen. And, and, and nods its head towards the queen, Bims does. But I like new friends. Yes. Interesting. E even, even, even drow friend, she said, uh, Bim says, looking over at, at Shadow. Yes. Drow friend, interesting. Yeah, uh, so, um, I just told him to the queen, and I bow deeply, and I say, I am Yukiha Kyokoashi, and I, I humbly present my service to you in any way that might be useful. And the, and the queen nods her head fully and, and says, ah, such, such respect and honor. I like this. You have presented yourself well here. She she goes to um, Ish Ishto. She goes, bring the others, and the others come in and start filing in. Now I'm not going to move all the tokens, but you can see easily there's at least 25 lizard folk that come in and, and start lining the walls. They're kids. They're young. They're they're old. They're male. They're female. Some are warriors. Some not. With them also file in what look like some fish folk. Um, the sea elves know that they are Lokatha, the, the fish folk, as well as files in um, some merfolk that, uh, well, actually the merfolk can't. They're not more of a, a, a surface type of deal. What comes in instead is um, the, let's see, there are... The Kaolinth don't come in. The Lokatha do. Um, God, there's one other sort. Hang on here. I'm missing something. I know I am. But these look to be the allies of, of the lizard folk that are filing into the situation here. Let's see. The shamans are among them that you have spoken with before. And there are... Hang on here. Um... Lizard folk, the Lokatha, and nope, not the Merfolk. Um, the the Kaolinth are also among them. They have a much rougher look. They they definitely you you feel the the troll vibe coming off of them. And um, now Sarive, who stands near the queen has a blue tint around his eyes, down to his neck, and to the back scales. And he nods. And she goes, Allies, fellow lizard folk, I present our new friends and allies. You will see them as such in our fight with the Shahagin. That I will see the, them die, yes, and us reclaiming our home. But our friends have done well, and she holds up the head of the crocodile you brought in and says, They have defeated Grayscale and helped us again to have open hunting on our lands. 
and you get much nods from the from the different ones around. She goes, we send forth two of our shield bearers along with Sathis to be the envoys to Salt Marsh. And if all goes well, the Lokatha, the the Kaolinth, and the lizard folk will trade with this village. You will show no disrespect. The Kaolinth looks for a second what looks to be a very burly one and says, we will not stand with aquatic elves. And, the, and they file out, nodding to the queen, the four of them. Which Oceanus looks, he just raised an eyebrow. This doesn't surprise you, Captain Bonnie, because you know the Kaolinth don't unite usually with sea elves. They just don't. The, the two, We're not going to go bad or worse. Yeah, I mean, the Lokatha, though, look impressed because you've seen them before, the fish folk. They normally don't, they're, they're more fearful, but they are banging down their tridents in respect. And she says, you may go back to your ship. Know that we will meet again soon. I will send word when we are ready. But go tell your council of South Marsh that Otho Kent, Sorive, and the lizard folk, as well as the Lokatha and the Merfolk, stand with you as allies. And she lets you know where the location is, which is down farther in the mirror off the coast, probably about another five to ten miles south. She goes, um, so for the different folk, um, the Let's see, it's Kaolinth is the one that is the, um, they are almost like a, a troll, an aquatic troll, in a sense. And then Lokatha is that. They're the fish folk. And then, of course, the merfolk are the ones that are all in the alliance. Now, Otho Kent says, we have one other ally. But I don't know if this ally will come. We have a black dragon that is an adult that has watched over us in our tribe and made sure that these foul creatures that the barons command do not harm us. So do not fear them. They are not your enemy. Though I know traditionally, black dragons do not associate well with humans and with elves and other creatures. But this one is a friend to us. Um, she shares the name of the dragon. Hang on here. And uh, the name of the dragon... Yes, cat. I see you. You want more attention. Good lord. That's the sister kitty. That's sassy talking now. <sighs> yes? Was the ones that walked out of the, the chamber? The Kaolinths. The Kaolinths? The Kaolinths. It's the oh, one with the, the K okay. up there. Yeah, the Kaolinths did not like the whole situation. Um, the young black dragon is um, here I'll spell it in here it's crevasson and it's actually they're a young black dragon versus a mature crevasson Yeah, they kind of do, and possibly, yeah. Yeah, I, I could, I could see them doing that, because you're right. Most times, kobolds serve as servants or underlings to the dragons. The queen looks over towards the group and goes, "Believe me." 
Kervasan will see all of you with respect because you respect our tribe. I will not see it otherwise. We protect Kervasan and Kervasan protects us. From the bottom of my foot, thank you very much. You are most welcome and such wonderful manners. It is nice and refreshing to see. She goes, I wish I had more for now to offer. But she says, and she nods to Sarif. And Sarif, who is the minister, pulls out a small chest and says, Two items I will give to your party now as gifts from our tribe to each of you for what you have done. And she says, the first, she lays down a little thing and it is a case that comes out of there with some arrows. It has about 10 arrows. She goes, these are magical arrows and these I give to your party. There are basically 10 plus 1 arrows that she gives. She goes, also, I give one other thing to you. And she it pulls out a ring. She goes, this ring will help one of you to swim much better. put this in here so it comes up but that is what she gives she goes these are a gift from our tribe in thanks for what you have done with the great crocodile you have our gratitude and hope that the Alliance will bring even more she goes there are so many more items that you will get from the Sahagin and they will be yours to choose which one are yours for each of you. We so wish I, I, we have more. So I nudge Balam next to me and say, you better take the ring, my friend, if you keep falling in the water. He just looks at you and just... He rolls his eyes and chuckles. <laughs> he goes, the way I smell right now, I don't know if I want to swim. But I may need to swim to the boat to swell, smell better at the way I'm going. <laughs> I know you would. Freya always looks hungrily at that ring <laughs> with what she can transform into. So. All right. With that, you, you are basically free to go back to the boat with all of the, uh, the folks you have now. I have to move these guys in. Let's see, put this one here. Put the, oops, these are the guys right here. So these, this one's here. Scale shield, scale shield, and then Sathis. And I will do this, and I'm gonna copy everybody. And then I'm gonna move the thing and let me know if it goes okay over to the ship. Um, for the ship. There we are. And I'll move it this way. And it should say the sea ghost. Come up saying that at least. And then we'll paste everybody on there. And then I need to get a couple of the sailors. I think I have the sailors. Ah, uh, yeah, they're on the other one. I got two sea ghosts, unfortunately. Let's see. Are they on here? So, nope, that's a different one. All right. So, does everybody see the sea ghost okay? Yep. I can. All right. Yeah. So, thanks, uh -huh. bump to everybody else. Yeah. Nicely done. All right. So, the sea ghost. Yeah, we kind of had everybody over there. Oceanus was on it. 
Lizard folk. Yeah, we kind of had everybody up there. So I can kind of move everyone back up this way. And then if you got a double, then just delete the double. And then everybody else can, let's see, I'll set everybody here. We can resize everybody. Um, so the scale shield there. And then uh, that's Oceanus. Scale shield here. That's one of the other ones. Let's see, we got Freya, so I can get rid of her. Let's see, we got Lyric, so I can get rid of her. We got Nicodemus, hey, get rid of him. Yes. Hey, Rick, I do, I do see a problem with the Sea Ghost. What's that? Where's the cannons? Oh, I know. There is no cannons on her, is there, right now? Um, this is the bosun that is on here with y'all. This one is gone. There are some other sailors that are up there. Let's see. I can get rid of Balam. Balam's on there. Veritas, you're on there. Silver's on there. I can move this over with Willow. Um, now, Yuki, you'd probably be about that size. Oh, did I just delete you? I didn't. I yeah, didn't. this place actually makes sense, and I kind of want you to keep it that way. Okay. Just because it shows, like, Yuki has well good size compared to all of these elves. Yep. All right, so then I will put you up on that size. There we go. There we go. Shadows there. I think we got everybody. All right, so that's everybody. So you can move them around. Make sure you can move your token okay. Um, get rid of this. This is the pseudo dragon, so I can use this. So I'm going to move Pelish off of here since I have the pseudo dragon. That's our one. And uh, there is the crew that is shuffling around on the ship. Let me see if I can get a couple of um, sailors. Where are they? Mm, let's see, sailor. There we go. We got one here. And then a one here. So that's two. And there is three, four, and that's the one who is kind of your bosun, the one that's by Oceanus. Um, let's see. Another one there. Another one there. Alright, so they are doing a round. This one is going to be over here working in the, in the rigging. This one is up top here along with this one. This one's working the rigging down here. And then you had one more, right? You had seven total. This one's up here watching the, the wheel. Or was watching the wheel. All right. So that is your crew outside normally. And they're just different people from Salt Marsh. Don't necessarily have them named. <laughs> I know I should, but I don't. They're just Sailor 1, Sailor 2, Sailor 3 right now. So. All right. So where is everybody going to go to? You can put into the different position. Who's going to have the wheel? Um, again, if you want to have it, Captain Bonnie, you're welcome to, if the party feels good with you having the wheel, Balam can do other things. Um, yeah, I mean, if he wants to take the wheel, I can do right. the, the whole thing with the lookout type thing at the last time. Now, you guys do have, hang on here, I think we have some cross. Spyglass. Remember, I had the spyglass. Yes, you do. You have the spyglass, which will come in real handy. All right, so let's see. I'll put that there and then rotate it. There's one of the ballista right there. And then the other ballista is up here. So you guys have two ballista on the ship that came with the ship. So that is it. That is your... your 
arms or cannons, as you call them, <laughs> Mike. Those are your, your day cannons of that. Set sails, you scurvy dogs. All right, perfect. Uh, the weather is just gorgeous right now. It's, it's, it's starting to warm up a little bit from where it was in the morning. You can feel the winds shifting from the south back up towards... It's going almost southwest versus northeast. Or, it was, let's see, northwest. I'm sorry, it's moving from the south going northwest where you guys were coming southeast, coming down. It was a colder wind from the the probably Icewind Dale area down. The ship goes underway. Everybody starts moving around. You can see this one's barking orders. She is definitely what you can tell a seasoned sailor of sorts. Oh gosh, why can't I grab a hold? There we go. She's barking orders out to everybody. Oceanus looks to you, Silver, and says, I will head back to my village and see if we can help in the coming battle to come. But I will take good news that you were able to help us he goes, thank you for freeing me, first of all. And he says, and for showing that you have wisdom in this. We did not know what the lizard folk's intention was. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you've done for us. It is my pleasure, he says, bowing. And, and he turns towards Freya and he goes, my home is not too far. It is several miles off the coast of Salt Marsh, um, towards the depths. Probably about 30 of your nautical miles. Sure, he says, or I can swim it. He goes, I don't mind either way. He goes, I was out here to patrol the area anyways. And now that I'm free to do so and I have no worries of the sea ghost, he goes, I, I prefer that. It'll give me a chance to get back to the ocean again. Always, he says, turning and bowing towards Captain Bonnie. <laughs> and um, he goes, no, you, you don't have to. He, he goes, I need to swim anyways. It'll be good to get back to the water. And he goes, no offense to the land. He goes, I understand as, as your new uh, person guiding the ship is doing that this is, is his calling. My calling is more in the water. So, I'm looking for Isaac the bartender. You can go down into the stores and get probably some of that stuff. But Oceanus hops off and, and he says, most most definitely. And it'll be good to see each other again sometime soon. And he starts swimming off. I mean, almost like a little torpedo on that. Um, so, let's see. Captain Bonnie, where are you? Did we get rid of you? Are you up there? Oh, nope, you're over here. You, you're at the front on the this one. You'd be back here where Sil our, uh, Shadow is. This is the wheel back here near Shadow. Um, back on this side right here. Gotcha. And then Freya would be back there with you and probably... Now, Lyric is more up here in this area on the main deck. Nicodemus is navigating for all of you. Um, if you want, go ahead and do your, um, survival check for guiding the ship. Do a roll and this will be, the anchors are up away and away you all are going. Anybody going up in the tower? Wait, that yeah. survival just for the captain, or was that for us all? No, just for the just for it'll be for Captain Bonnie because Captain is guiding the ship. Right. And the rest, I kind of have an idea what the crew's doing. They're they're pretty savvy yeah. with this. You want me to roll, roll sign? You just roll survival. You click on survival under the skills, mm -hmm. and this will be basically you're guiding the ship, even though Nicodemus is calling out the directions. Good. 14, you got it well into hand. You you go well outside of any reefs, and you're heading back up towards the north, towards Salt Marsh. 
Two degrees, starboard. Beautiful. I love it. So you are, you you're like an old hand to this. This is this is actually and and you can add a plus two on your survival rolls. You can note that because of your sailor background to it. Okay. So that way you can add whatever you roll. You'll add the plus two to it. So again, going really well. You Yuki, this is kind of an experience for you. I don't know if have, have they done this before? Where they they have gone out on a ship like this and and done the sailing. Yeah, we have. Their whole, whole life has been sailing short distances, though. So oh, very is nice. Long distance. So we, the mast. So did we lose your icon on there? I'm looking for you. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I just moved to the oh, okay. for a bar and a place to grab a snack as well. Oh, okay. All right. Who's, who's got the spyglass? Yeah, you're down there with Veritas in the hold. It's it's more the spyglass is with silver. She, that's the one with the moon on her head, the elfin picture. Gotcha. She's up it's at the. Silver. What's she, the cloud formation like in the distance? She's on the foredeck, or or, or what is it? It would it be the forecastle, a uh, forecastle, the foredeck, and then the mainsail is back where you are. So she keep an eye out for the. Uh, weather. Yes, she is. And and go ahead and make a, a roll <laughs> looking for a bar and a place to eat. Definitely you could do you could sit there with Veritas and have a few drinks. Because Veritas is he he is more of your rum drinker and, and relaxer of the bunch. Okay. Alright, so go ahead what and are, Silver do what are um, go ahead. You got it, Captain. What will be your course? Wherever the wind may take us. <laughs> well, it's so funny, because I'm the captain. And the captain. <laughs> you got two captains. This is fun. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I right, Captain. So where was our course? There you go. Um, back to the village. All right. So... <laughs> Two degrees starboard, four degrees northwest. You hear Nicodemus bark out. He goes, "You're going to go northeast, about." Mm. The second star on the right, and three on the north. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now he does his thing. Let's see what he can do there with his. And then. Shadow, are you going up into the con or up into the tower? All right, let's see. I'm actually having a drink with Veritas. <laughs> All right. Hi, honey, what's up? I just put her down, so... Okay, I'll keep her a little more down. All right, so he says, and he, and he points out, you can see he's got his um, sextant that he's using, and he, and he points you in the direction you need to go. And that's a little purple-haired gnome. He's he's kind of mm -hmm. got got the deal on where he's watching with the with the horizon line and everything else. Go ahead. Do we have a name for our ship? Say again. Do we have a name for our ship? You kind of do and don't both. It, it's right now with what you have. Yes, the ship makes total sense. Because again, where the Shahagin are is down off the. It's a coastal fortress that is just off yeah. the coast. And then do we, do we have a name for the ship? Oh, the name. The name for the yeah. ship is the Sea Ghost originally, but I thought it was the Elven Regalia or something. Like nah, that. I like that. If you want to call it the Elven Regalia, I will note that down, and we will or make it I like it. I would go for the uh, the GB main. <laughs> well, you guys can sort it out. Right now, I'll call it uh, the... Remember, we needed it to be the seagulls to hide our identity. Oh, well, I don't know. Willow said... I think that Willow said the Elven Regalia. But yeah, it was a suggestion, but you know, we can decide group. And to be fair, at the time, we were all elves, but we're not all elves anymore. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. Yeah. I offered the name to Judy May. Gee, May. All right. So we can um, think about it. All right. So the Judy May is up there. 
I'll put that there. That way we have it for the next time. All right, so there's several of them that, uh, again, because the party can come up with it as a whole. Just work and see what what works for the group as a whole with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Balam's like, I just want a nice ship to sail on. I enjoy <laughs> the sea and the ocean, and it's all good. He's happy he's not in the water. Oh, yeah. he's He has since soaked his things in the seawater and at least gotten the stench off of them. But, yeah. Oh, you smell better. Oh, yeah. Just slightly. He's like, uh, You don't look any better, but you smell better. Uh, he says, eh, well, he says, I'm a tiefling. I, I am what I am. <laughs> he says, smiling. I think it's nice if you take responsibility. <laughs> well, you can see he's got a blue tail that comes out of the back deal that is forked. Or not, well... I read, um, see the uh, wheel I'm here. Is it got a compass nearby stuck to the ground? Or is it just of my own one? You do. You have a compass that is actually in the center of the... Or in the wheel that can be taken out of there. It's a little compartment that has one. Okay, that's fine, and that's just all I need to know. Yep, you just pop it open. It, it's brass on the, the outside, and it, it clicks open, and inside is the compass itself. And you can see that Nicodemus is using both, too. He has his sextant as well as compass that he's using. Um, that's fine. Keep the, keep the sails in line with the wind. We don't want the wind to tear them. See shots in the hull of the ship. Oh my gosh, the three of you. All right, so do me a favor. After a couple drinks, Yukiha um, and Shadow and uh, and Veritas, do me some Constitution saves. Because okay. yeah, it's going to mess with you. You're drinking rum and it ain't watered down. Not like the normal. The rest of you are working around the. Ooh, Yuki's feeling good. They're, they're definitely feeling good yeah. and, and kind of fuzzy in a good, happy way. How have you got supplies for scurvy? Uh, pretty good, actually. You guys have as a whole a nice, fresh, because of what's grown in salt marsh, you have a very nice hold full of um, fruits and vegetables as well. There, there are a version of citrus fruit, but not like what you would get down on the equatorial area. It's oh, as best as you can we, grow up here. And do we have our ship's cat? Uh, you do not. You, well, Lyric, if you want to consider Lyric. Yeah, cats. absolutely. But Lyric, I guess, is. She's the good luck of the deal. And actually, she is doing her little happy dancing across the deck as she is. Why is, why is Lyric, anyway? <laughs> the waves aren't bad, actually. The the it's about a good uh, six seven knots going back. No, uh, I say what is lyric? Oh, lyric. lyric is a tabaxi. She is. She is a. Let's see if I got I'm a picture. Right I, can, I will He's show here. you. Um, let's yeah. blow her up a little bit. This is lyric. She kind All of right. leopard. Mm -hmm. She's like a white skinned leopard. Is the best way to put her. So, um, she she is she's got a pretty good charisma too. She is attractive for a cat folk, definitely, and she has that kind of a sauciness to her, anyways. It's it's not an aloofness, but it's the cat's sauciness is the best way to put it, with her, and she, her her performance isn't great, but she's just doing a little shuffle step across the deck as she's moving along and and she purrs at the the bosun and the bosun smiles back at her you you definitely get the vibe that the bosun likes lyric of course it's lyric this is the best way to put it lyric is a flirt a huge flirt but a harmless flirt at the same time yeah she definitely has not some liver meow power <laughs> she does she has a confidence i think that's what the best way to put her she is confident of what she and, and who she is. Uh, Rick? Yes. Do you need a roll um, for my spyglass? Yes. Make a roll for me. That's what I was going to be asking. What did we use last time? Um, we used the perception. And you get with the spyglass a plus two. 
to the perception. So, it's a ten. so yeah, you don't see much out on the waves right now, though there are some sails in the distance that are going the opposite direction. And from what you looked at on the charts, you think that that's where the sailing lanes are, a little more off of the coast. Um, the flags have a Neverwinter flag on them. You, you're familiar with the flag for Neverwinter? So they're Neverwinter flags for the city-state. Um, but yeah, they look like two three-mast ships going south. One looks almost like a man of war. It has open ports on it that you think ballistic can be pulled up and fired out of. The other looks more like a merchant cog of sorts. Okay. But yeah, you, you do see that. Um, everybody else that's on deck, do a perception check for me. The lizard folk are enjoying the day. Um, let's see, where is Willow? Because I gotta move but the. the bot. Yeah, there you go. I gotta move your pseudo dragon Bims back there with yeah. you. Yeah. Ooh, nicely done, oh, Captain bad. Bonnie and Willow. All right, you both spot what looks to be some forms swimming up and down, farther off to the west of the ship. You can't make out what they are, but you definitely know they are a sea folk. Whether merfolk or something else, you're not for sure. Freya, your eyes very keen. Oh. You make out they have a form that has a fin that goes up over their head. They're a, they're a greenish color, and they have tridents. They do not have a full long tail with a flipper that you would expect from merfolk. You are thinking that they are Sahagin scouts. They look mm. it. Ready yourselves, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> um, I shout, Silver West! <laughs> Alright. So... So that she can see with the spyglass. The lizard folk move over to here. They have their weapons out. They both have spiked clubs and shields. This sailor moves over here. This one here. One begins loading the ballista mm. on the ship. And they... Tom Silver, I recommend all stop. I concur with that. All right. So you bring, Road, bring the mast up, drop the anchor, All ready right. your weapons. You have the feeling that the anchor is not going to go down deep enough. You would just have to bring the sails up and then slow as best as you can. The sailors are going to take a shot off the bow. That'd be a plus three. And they fire, and the ballista bolt misses. It goes out, and it lands where the Sahagin would have been that they were aiming for. And so they do not resurface after that. The shot goes out. It hits the water. And... Dun, dun, dun. That's where we're going to stop the day. Being I remember for you, if they're fast enough to keep up with it and get on board... Yeah. We can't be, be distracted if we really hit something. They definitely, it, it would not be a good situation. All right, so I'm going to put the 150 XP in the, um, for each, for 09, 12, 2020 session. It plus. makes it easier for us, though, because we don't have to worry about hitting anything. All right, so plus 75 each for role play, because everybody did some great role play tonight, plus another 100 XP each for um, the treaty. Sorry, right, can you repeat that first one, please? All right, so it's 150 plus 75 plus um, 100, which will equal 325, I believe, if I'm correct. Okay. Yeah, 325. Yep, 325 total each 
plus the um, 10 each plus one arrows and plus of swimming. 10, Those, plus, 10, 10 yep. arrows plus one. So it's all going under. If you look under, under um, the Discord under the Salt Marsh XP and Treasure, it should be under today's date, and I put it in there. That way everybody uh, has that. Now, it's up to Akisha if you want to put in some of the notes or whoever wants to put in some of the notes under the um, the stuff for uh, general or even in here for some of the names that you're working with for the right. different lizard folk. I have them written down, so I'll, I'll add them in. Let's see, and what else is going to do? The next game date will be the 26th. So I'll say September 26th at, let's see. Boy, this will, this will be tough on everybody's time. So I'm just going to use the EST time, 6 p.m. EST, which is our Eastern. Are we Eastern Daylight or Eastern Standard right now? Um, we're, we're Daylight, aren't we? I think we're still daylight. Yeah, we're EDT. So that's just East Coast U.S. time. So figure it from the difference, and it'll be the same time we started, like tonight. What I'm going to do then also is in the roll 20 here, I'm going to put in the next few dates through the next few months so we have them. And everybody is ready on that. But it's basically every two weekends, every two Saturdays. Yeah. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it. It was a great outing. I think this is a really good group. I'm liking what I'm seeing here with this. Um, Thank you so much. I had a blast. Uh, it's, you're so welcome. I'm glad you could be a part of it, Haven. And, and same, Wolf, that you could make it and be a part of it. I think the two of you are going to add a lot to the group. Uh, T, it's good to see you here, man. I think this is a better day for you, yes? Definitely. All right. I like it. So I'm hoping this works out for everybody because I love having everybody here. Um, I know that, as always, Yumi, Akisha, Mike, Will, or um, Evie are always having fun with it. So I'm glad everybody could be back to have a lot of fun with it. And it should be yeah. a great group. Um, and, and the one thing I've said before, Anybody that wants to do some side role play outside when you guys get back to Salt Marsh or get to a point where you can, um, just hit me up in Discord. Just do a, a DM there and say, hey, I'm thinking about this. I know a couple have done that and really enjoyed it. I know T has. I know Evie has. I know that Akisha yeah. has and Yumi. So any of the rest that wants to do it, please. I mean, I, I enjoy that. Rolls, I'll trust any rolls that you do, you know, on your dice. I'm not that much of a stickler that I've got to see the rolls. I figured by now, if I can't trust everybody, then what am I doing, right? <laughs> yeah. But I, I love it, and um, yeah, this 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 will be a lot of fun. This is going to be an ongoing campaign, and then next one, we're kind of... I got to see what the other group's going to do because I think my other Pathfinder group is going to go probably the way of D and D too, just because of simplicity. Two um, E is not kind of rubbed off on everybody yet, even though I love it. it. I don't think it's rubbed off on everybody. Honestly, I'd love to try it. I've never tried two E. If you ever doing like, a, a one shot or anything, I'd yeah. love to give it a go. I would definitely love to go back to two E again. Two E's fun. I mean, they've gotten the classes have they've done so much, and they've got the new book with the swashbuckler in there and the investigators. And oh man, I am really impressed with what they've done. The only, the only, the only, the only um, two E campaign I won't do again is for Flakestone. I've done it three times. Oh sure, yeah. yeah no, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do Plague Stone or something like that. I will do most likely. I'll take a one e or I will do one of the the others. I know that um, one of the ones that the party there wanted me to go back to because I did Rain of Winter and we never got Rain of Winter done. And Rain of Winter is a lot of fun. I love running that one. Is Rain of Winter two e? Can I easily make characters for two e? It's it can be made into two e. I can easily convert all of the NPCs over and 
It has a Baba Yaga theme, and it's in Arisian, which is the northern that, realms. That would be my. That would honestly be my preference. That would, it's okay. it's something that we could do. I mean, if everybody here wanted to do that, that's great. I, I think we take a vote at the end once, because this will go into next year easily. I mean, there's there's a lot to do yet, and so yeah, I mean it, it's. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we should have a lot of fun with these characters and get them at least up to, by the time we're done, your characters should be 18 or 19 easily. And then oh, if, you, and if you want to do more, well, you just let me know. I mean, I, I'm, I run it with a campaign, but I keep it open that if you want to go further, we can go further. I mean, it's easy for me to convert sword coast stuff. That's pretty easy. Uh, but yeah, no. When we get to a new one, if if everyone wants to try two E, that's fine. That's something that we can do. I know. I can. I can easily help folks meet with their characters. Awesome. Well, and I think I think Akisha will definitely want that. It's one I've been I've been teasing her with that, and she's like, uh, I don't know, I got one E and and this, and I'm telling her it's so much more simplified in the character creation. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, you know so. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I know it's late for some of you, so for those in the the UK and Scotland, I'm going to let you guys head off so you're not up too late. <laughs> and yeah. appreciate you both for being, being here and being here late your time. And everybody else, thank you so much. And we'll see everybody in two weeks. Great game, guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye.